up, y'all? Welcome back to uh, the Journey Podcast. This is uh, episode three. Got my guy Jake Moscato here. My guy. Been, uh, <laughs> been my guy since what? Third grade. Third grade. Third yeah. Because yeah. did we go to uh, Oakwood together? Or we-, we went to Oakwood, and then I think Bircher. We, we had Miss Marola, right? Third grade. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Third, and fourth grade. Oh, fourth grade, we had. Kateas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what was that? Eight years old. Yeah, bro. I don't remember anything from that. <laughs> no. I remember, bro, I remember people used to call me Denmark boy. <laughs> you actually, bro. You bullied him. He bullied me growing up, actually. <laughs> bro, who, who, who started that? It, it could have been you. It might have been Jason, bro. Rip. Might have been Jason. Yeah, yeah rest in peace with Jason, man. Yeah. But, yeah, no, that was funny. But, yeah, so it's been, you know, we've been boys since we was little kids. Yeah. And uh, we've had such a similar journey and similar story and two different, you know, aspects of life. But like we relate so much and just the way we've handled things and the way things we had to face. Yeah. Just going through Juco, like the life of Juco and his side was football, my side was basketball, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, appreciate you coming on, bro. It's yeah. an honor, definitely. Thank you so much, bro. What what made you want to, you know, hit me up to have me on? Bro, because your story, like, yeah. like you know, my first two episodes was two high major athletes, you yeah. know, professional athletes. Yeah. And then like it's just, known. I remember I saw you were having them, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. ESPN. Yeah. So it was like, you know, and then it's now, I can't, I couldn't relate that much to them yeah. in that aspect where it's like they're high major, so I've never faced that. Yeah. Me and you have gone through the same grind, the same struggle. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, now I gotta have Jake on. Yeah. The, your mindset is so different from us going into St. Anthony's freshman year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, nah, I gotta have Jake on because it's like, I still know you, I've known you my whole life. Yeah. But this is like a new side yeah. of you. I definitely wanna, I want the people to know and you could, you know, talk about everything you got going on too, which yeah, is, bro. you know, it's been, you know, great what you're starting. Thanks so much, man. A lot of love for having me on, bro. Yeah. I, I always have like a lot of respect for you. Any, anytime we've ever made, uh, met up, it's always been love Every and how, how are you, you know, how is everything? And bro, like you switched schools 17 times, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a couple of different JUCOs, bro. Like, so uh, every time, every time we ran into each other, it was like, where you at now? Oh, I'm in Texas. I'm in Louisiana. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, like, like, I'm in Cali. I'm like, bro, like, we're yeah. going two kids from Huntington. Yeah, yeah. And we're all over the country. But the cool thing, bro, is every time, like, bro, normal people would hear, like, you switch schools, like, a lot, and they'd be like, oh, like, you, that's whack, or why are you doing that? And I would just be like, it's cool. How is, how is that, yeah, you know? Bro, like, no, one, no one understands what what it's really like when you're in Juco. It's a whole, you know, no it's a whole different world, bro. You can watch no Last one knows. Chance U and still have no idea what. No idea, bro. What, those Juco's, they're scholarship Juco's, bro. Like, I don't, like, I, I mean, I, I don't know how basketball Juco works, but like, both Juco's that I played at weren't scholarship Juco. No, no, Cali, yeah. So, yeah. Like, because their res, like, residents go to school for free. Yeah. In Cali, so I mean. But my, that's new. Yeah. That wasn't even there. The, when I was playing in California, uh-huh. that wasn't even there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, mine, mine. I was on full scholarship every JUCO. That's sweet, bro. You know, yeah, that's eating love. for free, living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I definitely can't relate to the football grind in yeah. Cali, the Cali JUCO football grind. Yeah. But yeah, every time we run into each other, it's just always been all love, and that's why I was like, yeah, I gotta have my guy. Yeah, 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 I'm excited, bro. I'm also excited to like kind of tell my story, bro, a little bit. It's time, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, it's cool. I've yeah. never like long form like told my story. Exactly, and, and from the outside looking in, I've always known what she was doing just from social media and yeah. catching up and right. bits and pieces but i, I want to know the details and everything because i yeah. know you fucking face some demons bro yeah. <laughs> so. demons there yeah. and we're on top though bro yeah. we're still here man yeah. no definitely yeah absolutely um all right cool yo so i guess uh should i do like an origin make like an origin yeah, yeah, story yeah. give us a little rundown of you know from start saint Anne's and passion for football yeah. and I mean, what, St. Anthony's probably one of the few Under Armour sponsored schools in the country. They're usually a nationally yeah. recognized football team. Yeah. We played, you know what I mean, four yeah. years They're at St. a big Anne's. deal. If you're, exactly. if you're growing up in Long Island and you don't, you don't have much perspective of outside athletic, yeah. like athletics and big programs, like, but I didn't know, we, like, growing up, I didn't know about IMG, no. Modern Day. No idea. You know, like, American we Heritage. We knew St. Anthony's, though. Yeah, we knew exactly. St. Anthony's. Exactly, we knew St. Anthony's. Everyone Parents knew. St. Anthony's, like, yeah. all right, like, St. Anthony's is the go-to. So, yeah, yeah. get into that. Why? Why St. Anne's, you know, because I, right. I went there for, what, two months? Yeah. <laughs> but Did you get a concussion on the first day by Dakota? Broke my, uh, <laughs> what'd I break? Uh, my 
Scapula? I sound yeah, like that. Yeah, scapula out that. for the season. First I was day like, of hitting. I'm done, with <laughs> I'm done with football. Oh my god. Wait, did you play? Were you playing football in, in middle school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I played, I played. Yeah. We played on Stimson. Yeah. And then you know I was playing bulldogs and stuff. Right. And then yeah. got to St. Anne's. I moved to wide receiver. Yeah. Cracked first day, broke scapula. I'm yeah. like, you know what? Let's let's do that's this hoop. It. Let's yeah. do this hoop football's, thing. Football yeah. football's a dumb sport, but that's nah, a beautiful sport. But it's kind of dumb. All right. So yo, origin story. Um, when I was <laughs> when I when I was seven years old. So yeah, the athleticism thing for me. Uh, growing up, I had a beautiful childhood, two beautiful parents, and you know, pretty privileged. Um, and uh, you know, I was always going. I was always ble very blessed to be able to go to like summer camps, and I even went to like Lehigh basketball camp right. and uh, Lehigh golf camp. So I was always, you know, growing up, like I'd always like have my um, my feet dipped into athletic athletics, but I was never really good. So one day for me, that was crazy was I think I was like 10 years old and there was this kid I went to a West Hills Baptist Church camp okay yeah right up the road right up the road um great camp bro yeah great camp Joey G yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. dude great kid. yo we have incredible athletes in this town mm. absolutely in incredible yeah and I wasn't that <laughs> so <laughs> especially at 10 years old so um so what happened was one of the things that sparked like I guess like the beast in me like the, uh -huh. some aggressive part of me that, that was needed to go on to um, become a high-level athlete was when I was 10 years old or nine or something um, there was this kid named Dan Marino and okay, I remember Dan. And, uh, <laughs> and, and and so whenever they'd pick kids for like kickball or any of those sports I was always picked last bro <laughs> always and um, I remember one day they were playing like Uncle Sam or something, or Capture the Flag or something like that. And I wanted to play. So I, I like, yo, I got next. And Dan Marino looked me straight in my face, bro, 10 years old, and he was a little older than me. And, uh, and I respected him, I kind of looked up to him. And he's like, yo, Jake, you're just not athletic. <laughs> <laughs> bro. And, that and, probably hurt. Oh man, yeah, it hurt. <laughs> yeah, it hurt. Because, bro, it's, when you're a kid, you're impressionable. And words, I'm learning now from reading uh, books like The Four Agreements, and I'm learning a lot about psychology, philosophy, spirituality. Mm -hmm. Bro, words have like insane meaning. Yeah. So at 10 years old, that a was like yeah. the catalyst, bro, that burned the embers of my soul <laughs> to then, <laughs> to then go on and like figure something out with football. Um, so anyway, so Dan Marino told me that I, I wasn't athletic and I was like, fuck you, man. Like watch, <laughs> watch what I do. And then uh, that was around the time I start, I got into Bull Huntington Bulldogs, okay. played Bulldogs for three years, was always on the B team, uh, was at Stimson with you, was always on the B team. Um, and I liked sports. I mean, I loved football, but I just wasn't like very good. I mean, like I was like, I had like a good build, but I wasn't like my body, bro. I was just lank. I just wasn't yeah, yeah. able to figure out how to. You weren't coordinated yet. You're, you didn't grow into your body. Yeah. Because yeah. I, what'd you play when we was younger? I was like, I was a center, bro. Offensive line. I was yeah. a center. Offensive yeah. lineman. And now, Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Offensive lineman. Offensive line. Yeah. So um, then I got to St. Anthony's, and then uh, I lost a bunch of weight. Um, and then, bro, I had like this anomaly of of, of a of a fourteen year old era because I was like this. I was like in middle school. I mean, I was like I was like cool in middle school, but like I was kind of fat and pudgy, you know. And I wasn't really like that good at anything. But then, like, I got to St. Anthony's, bro, and I started getting fades, and I started hanging out with the older kids, bro. Right. And then I started like getting into like women, bro, and partying, you know. St. Anthony's will do that to you. Yeah. Um, so then I wanted to play. When I got to St. Anthony's, like being a center wasn't cool, and I was like pretty skinny. So I remember like, yo, like what's a cool position? And I was like, defensive back seems pretty cool. Yeah. You know, <laughs> let me go try that out. <laughs> and, uh, I remember when you told me that? What'd you go to safety? You moved safety. to safety. Safety. Like, safety. Got to go to safety. Go center to safety. Center to safety, bro. <laughs> That'll be not an NFL very, story. not very athletic, you yeah. know. Like, uh, and, and long story short, bro, like um, at the St. Anthony's football camp, I ended up catching a pick, and like that's all I needed, bro. Like that was all the belief and faith that I yeah, needed, like, bro. I can do this. Like I can do it, yeah. Um, so then, long story short, I ended up becoming the starting safety for St. Anthony's, which yeah. was a big deal, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely. Because I remember growing up in our town, bro. Our, you know, people like have this weird thing, bro. Like especially parents, bro. Like they they have to like compare their kids to other kids, and um, the culture in Huntington 
is just terrible, yeah, bro. It is. It's all about like my son is better than your son, and and he's gonna play. At most most dads are coaches, bro. Exactly, bro. And it's all politics here. All politics, all politics bro. Politics, and it's. It's terrible. Oh, it's, it's really terrible. It's terrible, bro. Like, it's not about talent at all no, in that, Huntington. Oh, talent Talent wasn't a problem for these, for the school, Whitman in yeah. general, and just around our area, bro. Yeah. Talent was never an issue. It was the the people guiding the talent and yeah. and what, what, what oh, was yeah. being done with the talent. Right. And yeah. it was in the wrong hands. Absolutely. All the time. Absolutely, because Whitman could have been an absolute powerhouse in all sports, bro. Like, like till this day, Collar, bro, Burton, um, who, who, KB, KB. I mean, bro, we had Jerron, bro. Jeron. Like, you, you know, you. Um, we had like crazy athletes, bro. Me later in my career, I ended up, you know, right. becoming good, you know. But uh, they just weren't able to figure that out. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, bro, my my brain, bro, it just does. It's beautiful, bro, because it runs 100 miles a minute, so I can I can talk. You know about anything forever, but at the same time, bro, I get sidetracked. Anyway, That's why you're here? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, I was starting safety, but like I was just the starting safety, bro, just because like I looked the part. Like, I, I wasn't like I don't think I made one tackle that year, bro. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> but that was that was your first year though, transitioning yeah. from offensive line to. Now you're in to, the to, defensive bag, you know yeah. what I mean, in the oh, secondary. The whole point of that was because people from Whitman, most a lot of people and parents were like, yo, Jake, do I send him to St. Anthony's? He's never yeah. going to play. Yeah. And then I started. Right. You know? And it was I, like, now what? Oh, yeah. he's not going to go anywhere. He's not going to go to college. From right. Now. He's not going to get a D1 scholarship. Yeah. Exactly. And then you just use that as fuel. And yeah. You know how many times I've heard that with basketball? Oh, my God. Did it bother, did it bother me at the time hearing that stuff? Yeah. Probably. Did it bother you? Yeah, of course. It has, it has to. Yeah. To an extent, because it's like, we're in the gym every day. Like they don't know what we're doing Hard. behind Hard. behind the scenes. They yeah. just see like, oh, he went here. It, it didn't work out as, as as everyone thought it would. Yeah. Bro, college is hard, and you know what I mean. Sports is like. Yeah. But yeah. behind the scenes, what the pain we was putting in, oh and God, then for man. people to still talk. But at, I'm at the age now. Bro, I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't matter. None of it ever mattered. Yeah. So right. an outside opinion never mattered yeah. anything. We were good at that. We were good at that, like just not caring, bro. Because okay. people had to say stuff about us, bro, especially because of the whole JUCO thing, and like we were just so passionate about something, bro. It just people would always, um, you know, consistently doubt and pick us apart, you know, try to tear us down with their words, bro. And we were really good. Yeah, because you because moving forward, people people saw community college, yeah, and was like, oh, yeah, you community college, yeah, yeah, you have no idea. Oh. What junior college? Yeah, junior college. Yeah, we're is, gonna get into that. Junior college is yeah, division I have one. Funny, very funny stories. Division one with head cases, people with no grades, yeah. and people that want something more than you wanted. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what it comes yes. down to. Yeah, and people have no idea what it go like the mental, physical strain it has on you being yeah. a JUCO for. What you you did three years? Three JUCO? years. Three years JUCO. Yeah, I did three, yeah. maybe four. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. I've been in Juco so oh, long. <laughs> Juco, once you go in, you can never get out. <laughs> it's Bro, like Vegas. I, I don't even know. I just got out. I just got out. I graduated 2015. I just got out of Juco. Right. We're 23. 23. Yeah. And I still have two years left. I just got out of Juco. Yeah. But yeah, so St. Anne's. So St. Anne's. So anyway, um, so then um, I started liking football, but I wasn't good. And then um, 11th grade, I ended up getting really fat, um, and I wasn't cool anymore. And I needed I needed some type of identity identity to pull on, because be, before that point, I was just all girls for me, right? And 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 partying. Um, and then 11th grade, I didn't have anything. And then, bro, by the grace of God, bro, I, I'm driving past Hills West, mm -hmm. and bro, I see like this group of just elite football players really? like bro elite, like elite you don't see that in Long Island like no. you just you don't see like seven feet tall the ripped to shreds like they looked like they knew what they were doing okay so I literally just got out of the car bro um and I walked up to them and and I see this dude bro looks like Vin Diesel um and I'm like hey man uh are you guys play football you know and he, and, he, and whatever the guy's like yeah whatever and I'm like, oh, like, uh, do you train? And he's like, yeah, like a little bit about me. I was in the NFL. This, the guy that I went up to was in the NFL for five years. Um, everyone that he was training was Division One athletes. There was two kid, one kid that ended up going to play in the NFL after that, Tyreek Burwell from our okay, town. Okay, yes, yes. Um, he lived right. What do you live on? Like 18th or 19th? I don't, I don't, exa I don't exactly up. remember. Yeah, but yeah, like right over here. Three or four blocks. Away. Um, so, so he, so, so he was like. I was like, yo, I want to come train. He's like, all right, cool. Like, meet us at the field tomorrow and uh, bring cleats, a uh, bottle of water, and a Bible. 
Really? And I'm like, I'm like, all right, you know? So uh, I did that and I got to the field and I quickly realized that the work ethic that I had in high school was not going to be enough to get to the next no. level. No. Not even. And, and yeah, that's a, but to me, like, that's like the best feeling when you're like, now you kind of know what it takes when it like hits you in the mouth. Like, all right, like I'm not doing enough. Yeah. And I feel like we both reached that point where we're like, all right, now I got to like, yeah. I got to take one more step. That was ahead. the moment. Yeah. That was and that's, the moment. And now that's what you need to, yeah. to play at the division one, to play at any yeah. college level. Like you really, you can't just walk into it. No. And, think what like what you're doing is enough because someone's doing more than you. yeah no always someone, literally always yeah like someone's like shooting a better podcast than us right, right. now no, <laughs> you know like someone dude. is doing something better than you so you have to stay on it man yeah and be and, consistent and, and, and yeah consistency persist. consistency yeah. is important bro yeah. super important that's the number one thing <sighs> super important bro so anyway um so yeah that day i died it was bro i was used to working out maybe like an hour like it, it, for me it was either field or the gym but like they showed me that like what it's like to do field and gym. It was basically an NFL mini camp, bro. It was five days a week, eight hours a day. It was gym, no, no, no it was field. So we would do, um, we would do other conditioning, agilities, you know, whatever. Um, and then it would be position work. So it would be like two hours of conditioning and then one hour of position work. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would go, to, we'd all go to the gym together. It was kind of cool. We'd all go to the gym together, take pre-workout in the locker room and then do like a three hour workout. But the workout wasn't like a regular, like do curls, you know, and then maybe like hit, hit some squats. It was like, it was like, workout. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like five different supersets and all of them had five different exercises in them. So I, like, I remember just being, like basically, bro, I went through the Crucible that summer, mm -hmm. and that changed that completely, bro. Uh, it, it had to change my uh, like your motor almost. I'm, where I feel like you you got to the point where you got so comfortable doing that, and then it became regular to you. Yeah. And then that's when you started seeing your progress when you turned, you know what I mean? Yeah. Turned into what? Would you move to like almost the end or linebacker after you put on the size? Yeah. So I went from safety to uh, defensive end. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's another, so you went from the line to the secondary, and now you're back on the back line on the, the line. other side of the boat. On the more, yeah, yeah. On, the, on, on, the on the fun side. side. Yeah, 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 on yeah. the fun side. So um, that, that summer was beautiful because I got my ass kicked day in and day out. I mean, Tyreek Burwell, he's from, he's from our, people that I don't know, he's from our town, 6'7", 330 pounds. I think he was the fastest lineman in the combine. Yeah. He's super fat. Bro, he was a walk-on at, 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 at Cincinnati, but he played at Cortland. He played receiver at Cortland. He was a walk-on at Cortland, I'm pretty sure, too. Really? Bro. Yeah. And then moved on to Cincinnati and had a great combine and got picked up by the Chargers. And then yeah. I think he was going to play with the Eagles, and then he retired. But he yeah. played four or five years in the league. Yeah, he was the real bro, he deal, made bro. It. He made and, it from hunting sensation. Made yeah, it. and we did one-on-ones every day. I never won one. <laughs> and he didn't take it easy, bro. If you look up uh, Camp 41 one-on-one, -on -one, you can go see my old, my, my unathletic fat ass, bro. Just getting <laughs> smoked, bro. <laughs> I hate that those videos are still online. Nah, origin stories, man. Nah, it's good, though. So, um, you finished up at what? At the end, at St. Anne's, so right? I, so, so then I, I ended up getting good at football. Um, but then they ended up moving me my senior year to D tackle. Okay. Because um, it's in, in like if you're looking right now, I'm not the biggest cat in, in the woods, you know. But um, in in Long Island, people aren't that big. Right. So I was like six two. They're like, yeah, defensive tackle, perfect, you know. So I got moved to D tackle, and, I, and my my senior year of high school wasn't very good because um, I was instead of like being the D end and pass rushing, I was like the guy that would just get fucked on stunts. Do the dirty work. I would do the dirty work and the DN would go get the sack. Exactly. And I'd be like, that was yeah, my you're, sack. You're, you're taking two guys two, with you. Two, three guys, And, and, and he, he's, he's swimming yeah. over someone and, and making the play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I didn't, ha I didn't really have a good year. So how Juco came about was, it wasn't a bad year, it just wasn't great. So how Juco came about was like, everyone at St. Anthony's was going to, um, like Harvard and Yale and Miami, yep. you know, all the big schools. And I, I got to uh, like March and I still didn't have any offers. And I remember like, bro, yo, coaches are crazy. Cause like coach, what I was saying before about um, what you can do as far as a kid with your word yeah. goes. Like bro, I had, I had so many coaches. I remember, oh, so I went up to Minucci 
And Minucci, if you're watching this, fuck you. Not, <laughs> not I mean, you're a cool dude and shit, but like, you really did me a disservice there. Everyone, actually, everyone in San Anthony's, brother Gary, fuck you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No, 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 no. Brother Gary, all right, no, nah, that was a little, brother Gary's a cool guy. He actually was one of the better ones, but like, bro, long story short, I didn't have one teacher at San Anthony's that would write me a letter of recommendation. Really? Not one, not one. Um, and I, and, and uh, I remember one day, Minucci was like, um, I was like, yo, like he played at Delaware, which like isn't like big time D1, but yeah. I was like, oh, D1, you yeah. know? So I was like, hey, m m coach, like I really want to play Division One, mm -hmm. you know? Like that was like the thing. We people get caught up on D1. You yeah, know how it is. And that, bro. That's a whole. That could be a whole another episode. Whole another episode. Yeah. Just Division One, Division One yeah. or, or bust. Yeah. And that's what it. That's that was like the ethos that and, I had. But that was all of our mentality. Yeah. Because it's just like we wanted pretty much to like prove everyone. Like yeah. if you're, you're Division One, you're stamped. Yeah. Pretty much in any sport. All right, you went Division One, you're yeah. stamped. Like yeah. all right, you can't really. Cool. You could say whatever. Like he you're didn't do shit forever. there or whatever. Yeah. But you went D1. Yeah. And I that, still and, brag about it. I try not to, oh, bro. Why but not? Like, yeah. Why uh, not? Yeah. It's a. It's not, It goes on the resume, bro. That was a dream, bro. That's a dream for all. Once you start the grind, Division One is the dream. Yeah, and that was it. Like that was like it started at ten years old. You know, when when that kid told me I wasn't athletic, bro. It, like started it like it literally was. It took me how many years? Twelve years, bro. No, 12, eleven years, bro, to finally end up getting to that goal, which I'll talk about. But anyway, let's get into JUCO now. So, oh, oh, but Minucci said to me, I was like, Coach, I want to play D1. Right. And he looked at me, bro, and he was like, he just like laughed, and like didn't say anything, you know, and then. The coaches at St. Anthony's, they'd have like big schools come down, like like uh, Rutgers would come down to the office and, mm -hmm. and, and speak to like Jordan Gowans, like the big time right. players. Yeah. Um, and even like lower level D1s would come in, like Sacred Heart. Brian. And, I, and I'd hear that they're there yeah. and I'd go to the office, even though they didn't call me in. And I would just like try to like, hey man, like I'm Jake, Introduce like I'm willing to, to, I'm yeah. willing to, you know, come as a walk on, you know. And bro, every single time I do that, bro, Riker would just be like, oh yeah, like, these coaches aren't here for you. You know, I feel so like so many coaches don't have their they they, they choose who they want to help. Yo, yeah, yeah, politics. Choose. They choose who they yeah. want to help. Yeah, they have the poster boy, the gold, the golden gooses. And that, and that's, I mean, me, I want to be a basketball coach. You know, after I'm done playing right. and stuff, but I want to try to help. And you know, you want to help everyone, but then I've never been in their shoes, so you don't know. Yeah. But if a kid with your work ethic and your mentality and stuff like yeah. that, a good kid and stuff like that, yeah. why would you not want to help that kid? You know what Just I mean? Introduce him. Let, let, let the kid, let the kid have a conversation. Give him a shot. Yeah. Help him. Yeah. That's all. Maybe maybe the coach maybe like uh, the coach would like me, you know, and then and then who knows? Maybe he ends up transferring to a Division Two school, and then and I can get a Division Two look. look. Exactly. You know. Uh, yeah. So like people don't people coaches don't do that. They do a bad job at that. Yeah. So um, I got hit up one day, bro. I didn't have any offers. It's like March, and I got hit up by Nassau Community College. And football powerhouse, though. Football powerhouse, bro. <laughs> All those schools I mentioned, Bryant, and Sacred Heart, we would have put 100 points on them, and they wouldn't have scored on us. Bro, you watch Last Chance U, you see in the leaderboards when I think it was East Mississippi, Nassau was like two or three. Two or three, it's number East two. Mississippi. We were above, we were yeah. above East Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> so. like, that's sick. <laughs> I mean, right 20 minutes, 30 minutes away. Right, right, right here. But I didn't know about Nassau. So I didn't that, know until you went there how yeah. good they were at football. No, no, no idea. No one knew. So, um, but my dad kind of knew. So I'm like, yo, dad, like Nassau Community College hit me up. He's like, no way. Really? He's like, he's like, yo, you're going to Nassau. <laughs> because at <laughs> that it. time, I was gonna go like try to figure out a walk-on spot at like at like Ithaca or Buff State, Buffalo State. Which like, bro, like nothing. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that, bro. But, but like, it just my dream was to play Division One, and I was. You, bro, you go let you gives you another chance. Oh yeah, bro. You go gives you another. I mean, last chance, you. Bro, a lot of time that's that's your first chance. Like this is the first time you're getting a real yeah. opportunity on a national yeah, level absolutely. where you can showcase what absolutely. you got. Especially for kids like us that aren't that don't come from states like Florida and, and exactly. California and Texas. Like those kids did have their chance in high school and they just ruined it. We just never had a chance to get division one looks. Bro, absolutely. You know? Um, and also like the opportunities here just aren't as much bro, they 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 other states they weight train all year long. You know, they're, outside. they're, they're playing out, just their sport. Yeah, yeah, they're outside. Yeah, yeah we, don't, year. we didn't have that. So uh, Nassau hit me up and um, I remember being ashamed. I was like kind of excited because I was, I was already on that like doubt fuels me kick. Mm -hmm. So once I found out, at the time Nassau was like number five in the country mm -hmm. um, and they had 26 kids the year 
that the coach hit me up were given Division One offers. Division One, right? So I was like, whoa, what is what is this? Yeah. A Division One football team, you know? <laughs> um, so then I started getting I started getting confident again, and it created this 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 thing of like I just love. I'm just gonna let doubt fuel me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember uh, college day at St. Anthony's. Everyone was wearing their Miami sweaters. Division and, One sweaters yeah. with their family behind. And them. I and I was like. And I was like uh, wearing the Nassau sweatshirt, proud. And co and teachers will come up to me and be like, "Yeah, hey, you're a football player, right?" And I, and I was like, "I was like, yeah, you know." And they're like, "Why are you going to Nassau? They don't have sports." And I was like, "That's just how not known." Oh, people are clueless. Yeah, clueless. clueless. That's why you can't you can't listen. Bro, listen to have opinions. No idea. Yeah. yeah, they have no idea. Yeah. On anything with sports. Yeah. So from the outside opinions, bro, none of it ever yeah. mattered. No, nothing. And as a 17, 18 year old kid, when your yeah. buddies are signing Division One or going here, going there, yeah. and you're like, all right, I'm about to go JUCO. Yeah. Bro, that for some, for me, bro, it's the best thing that ever happened. Best to me. thing, but I, I, I am so blessed to go to JUCO, bro. Bro, if I could go back, I would go JUCO again. Let's do it again. <laughs> I'd go JUCO again. Let's as, play another sport. As much every day you're at JUCO, you're like, I can't wait to go home. Like, or I, I hate it. Like, right. I can't wait for this to and be over. And then it's over. And then once you realize, like, wow, that was probably yeah. one of the best years, best yeah. two years, whatever, of your life. Yeah. And those are like your brothers for yeah. your life. Because oh, y'all went through bro. hell. 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 Yeah, I couldn't so, imagine football. Oh, couldn't dude. Imagine oh, just wait football. for this. This is a funny story. So, um, anyway, uh, I end up, you know, committing to Nassau and then work, bro. That's when, like, we. I was already working hard the, the summer before uh -huh. with Camp, Camp Forty One, the the um, the bald headed dude, um, and then. I spent that summer grinding, bro. 250 pounds, bro. Yeah, like I, I can move pretty well. Yeah. I'm, I'm strong as an ox, bro. Like I'm not that now, you know. But like <laughs> at the time, bro, I was like ready to go play Nassau football. Um, and I get to Nassau, bro. For the, it was August 1st was the first meeting, and I get to Nassau and I come home. I get to, I go to the meeting, and I come home and I'm like, Mom, Dad, I'm quitting. Really? Yeah, bro. I was like, I'm quitting. I was like, I can't play football with those guys. You, th you felt like you couldn't compete. Oh, uh, just by looking at them. Just by looking. Bro, right when I walked in the door, bro, listen, I'm 6'2", I was 250, but like, bro, like, as far as that's concerned, I'm, I might as well, I'm just a scrawny Italian kid compared to what was coming. Uh, and, and bro, all these kids too, like, they all had offers. You know, so that was like Another. weighing me down. Now I am really like playing with kids that really got it out the mud, and I wasn't that, bro. I was pretty privileged. Exactly, you it was know? a wake up call for you, bro. A wake up call. Wake and up. Sometimes you need that because mm -hmm. that probably humbled. Best thing in the world, bro. That probably humbled you so much. Yeah. And you know what I mean, playing with those guys, and and then you realize, you know what I mean, like you think these guys are. You know, they be, they become your best friends. Best friends, when, when bro. You, from down south, I'm, oh, I got man. friends from all Alabama, Everywhere. Louisiana, yeah. and you know what I mean. They become your brothers. Yeah. So I think, you know, what I mean, that, that's a crazy. It's just a humbling experience. It was just, beautiful, but at the time, bro, I wasn't I wasn't ready to. You weren't mentally there. I was just scared because football is a dangerous sport, bro. So I, I I immediately was just scared, bro. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna die, you know. Yeah. And then and then and then I don't know what it was, but some something that night was like, yo, I'm not gonna quit. I made it this far. And I went to the first practice the next day, bro, and I balled out. That's good. I balled That's out. That's what you have to do. And the next day, bro, I balled out. And the coaches, bro, I think that like I got recruited there because the coaches just needed like I don't I don't want to say like like practice dummies, but like I I didn't get recruited there because they were expecting me to like go in and like be their Division One prospect. Like I got recruited there to give the kids some comp give the kids competition, you know. Yeah. Fill, fill a spot. And uh, I remember all the coaches being like, "Oh, so my, my defensive line coach, shout out Antonio Anderson, great coach. I love my coaches from Nassau, bro. Yeah. Like, um, he, I remember like winning one on ones. So like I would go against. Um, I remember, funny story. So one one of the kids that I'd go against a lot was this kid Badar Traore, who's uh, six eight. He was the number one recruit in our class for JUCO. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, he was like. He, he plays LSU now, football, which is the, the, the national champions. Um, and I used to beat his ass, bro. Yeah. Like, really bad, bro. Like, beat his ass, you know? Um, no come for me, he'll, he'll eat me now, you know? <laughs> like, you know, but like, bro, I had this chip on my shoulder, bro, that like, I just, I wasn't scared anymore. 
You know, like once I just, you get over that, once you get over that fear and you get that confidence, then you start rolling. Rolling, bro. Yeah. And all the coaches were like, "Okay, St. Anthony's. Okay, St. Anthony's." You know, and uh, that was when I realized, like, okay, I can, I can play football. Yeah. Um, but that year was just, I mean, trials and tribulations wise. I mean, we went on a 30-hour bus ride to Texas really? to play the number one JUCO in the country, Trinity Valley. Okay. Um, and we and, and, and uh, we went in there and we beat them, bro. Really? The, first of all, the whole town came. I've never experienced anything like I that. Play, I, you know, I, I mean, for basketball-wise, that's Region 14. I okay. played Trinity Valley twice. Really? Wow. At, at Trinity Valley, I played at Trinity Valley. Yeah. They had point guard Texas A&M yep. now. Yep. Uh, shooting guard went to Longwood. Yeah. Other wing was an Eastern Michigan transfer. Yeah. yeah. The big went to Cal State Bakersfield. Right. The other big Wichita State. Right. Right. We're a small juco in Louisiana. Right. Only Louisiana juco playing in Texas. Yeah. Trinity Valley is is big a deal. national Very big juco. Deal. So yeah. like the whole town, those small towns, they come and support every game. The basketball yeah. games was lit. I never went to a football juco game. But yeah. So yeah. yeah, how was that with the whole town and oh, man. The atmosphere? Dude, the whole town. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so I'll never forget. We they had a pep rally. We didn't have pep rally in Nassau. We didn't, you know, but like we went and bro, there might have been like ten thousand people from the town come for this cookout, bro. And That's like their division one, division That's one, their bro, team. full blown. Yeah. And, and and the cheerleaders, bro, they had male cheerleaders, bro. Yeah. Like they're coming in doing flip somersaults and and I'll never forget, bro. Bro, my team was just so like just savage, bro. Like right when Trinity Valley walked in, we met them at the door, bro, <laughs> of their cookout. <laughs> well, you know, bro, and we were doing Nassau Nassau chants, chants, bro. Like chants, like right in front of them, bro. Like I mean, y'all have nothing to lose. It's the number one team in the country, and and y'all are here to beat them and, yeah. and prove that y'all are better than them. Yeah. So y'all had a. You know, who cares mentality, Bro, and that's I, what you need. I remember the town just looking in like amazement that our team was like, Bro, it's just a bunch of these scrappy dudes, bro, going to their cookout and doing our chance and going to their 50 yard line. Oh, shit, man. You know? Um, and long story short, uh, yeah, bro, we ended up beating them, bro, in, Tex in wow. Texas. And that was like, we are now the number two junior college in the country, bro. And that was a special, special year. But we were waxing teams like 80 to nothing. 74-7. Yeah. We played Navy Prep, bro. We beat them like 60 to nothing. And Navy's a division one. They're a powerhouse. The Navy Prep kids go to play at Navy. We yeah. beat them 60 nothing. Yeah, we're a division one football we team. Were, we at, were studs. Nassau Community College. Yeah, so anyway, uh, long story short, what happened at Nassau, number two Juco in the country, bro. We're raving, we're rolling. Bro, not, yo, people always ask me, like, what was my favorite year of, of college? And it was my freshman year at Nassau. Bro, we were even having, bro, we had like 10 different football houses, bro. So we, and the football house would be chilling with the baseball house. And we'd be chilling with, in like Hempstead? In Hempstead. Really? And we'd be chilling with Hofstra too. Okay, it's right there. So, right bro, the girls, bro, <laughs> and the dancers, bro. <laughs> bro, it was awesome, bro. It was, Divi it was Division One, bro. Best time, best time of my entire life, bro. Just because culturally, it was such a different experience and it was so much fun. Like, not only was it Division, was it basically Division One, and, and we were rocking and rolling, kicking teams asses it was like bro I, I finally got out of my Long Island bubble you know and got to see what it was like to be hanging out with kids from different cultures and different communities bro and it made me it, it brought in my perspective and it made me a much better person bro and that's why I think diversity is extremely important mm -hmm. like extremely important bro like uh, like and and uh, so yeah but anyway back to football um, we had a scandal bro that year I remember that. We had a scandal. Basically, our coach our coach was playing kids that were ineligible. And the league found out about it. And every game that those kids stripped everything. Yeah, they, they took away all our wins. We were going to play for a national championship. I talked bro. to your dad about that. Yeah. I remember talking to him about the gym and everything. He was telling me. That's tough. Yeah. That's yeah. Tough, it was tough, bro. I, I, we went from like rocking and rolling Division One, playing for a national championship, to like everyone, like all the coaches. Everyone left, right? Left, yeah. yeah. AD got fired. Um, so at that point, that's when he was like, "All right, now I gotta make a move." Right? Now, I gotta, now I gotta make a move. So uh, one day I'm sitting in class, bro. I'm a big believer in God, bro. I'm sitting in class, and I'm in like psychology. I'm not paying attention. I didn't pay attention in college. Uh, and I had this idea, bro. I'm just on my computer, and I thought about there's junior colleges in California, isn't there? And I kind of had that like I want to like get out now that like I've met kids 
from different places and I'm seeing like how amazing and beneficial that is, mm -hmm. I wanna like get out of Long Island, bro. I wanna get out of this bubble. Yeah. So I did that, bro, and I went to, uh, so I hit up the top five JUCOs in California and a couple of them hit me back and I ended up setting, setting visit. Oh no, I hit up Santa Monica City and they were number one at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, were, they hit me back because I was like, dude, playing football in Santa Monica? How cool would that be? And they hit me back and they were like, um, what did they say? They were like, oh, like, we'd love to have you, but uh, we're going to El Camino. Okay. And I was like, what, what the fuck is El Camino? You yeah, know? It used to be Compton Community College. It used to be Compton yeah. Community College, yes. Yeah. I think uh, Nigel, Nigel's brother, I'm pretty sure, went there. Really? I know he went out somewhere in like Southern Cal. Because he wanted to, you know, play at USC. Yeah. So he thought, like, you know, doing a Cali Juco yeah, year. But yeah, tight, Compton bro. Community College. So so now you're Huntington Station kid. Yeah. And now you're 20, 21. And now you're in Compton. Yeah. Playing football. Yeah. Like chasing, what? still chasing Division yeah. One dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if someone, and that's, like, the craziest shit. That's why it's called the journey. Like, yeah. if someone told you as a ninth grader when, when you first became right. a, a, in the secondary, moving from offensive line, like, hey, and... In six years, you're going to be playing football in Compton for a JUCO chasing Division One. Right. What would you have said? I'd be like, you're out of your mind. Bro, you have no idea. Yeah. Every, I feel like every there's year. No there's no possibility. There's no, there's no chance that I would have ever even, even no. saw that coming. Yeah. Where, that is the journey, huh? Yeah. That's like, the point of this podcast, bro. Sure is. Yeah. Like, wherever you're at today, like you have, you had no idea a year ago that that you'd be at this point. Yeah. Someone told you a year ago yeah. what you'd be doing what you're doing now. Wouldn't have guessed that. No. That's why you have to embrace it. Yeah. We get so outcome oriented and results oriented that our feet are never planted on the ground for the moments that matter. Mm -hmm. And that's why we look back at them when we're done with them. When we're done with Juco and we're like, wow, those were the best years of my life. And I wish I was like, I wish I embraced that journey more. So that's what I do now. And I know that's what you do now. It's your little podcast is literally called The Journey. And like, if there's anything that I would tell anyone, it's like, dude, it's never about result. No. Never. Um, it's about everything, everything in the middle. Yeah. I feel like that you go through. Yeah. And that, that you face and yeah. the good, the bad, everything. Yeah. It gets you to where you're supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. That's what I truly believe in. Like everyone has a plan. God has a plan. Yeah, bro. I feel like if you just stick the course and you really like are consistent and persistent with your work and yeah. your passion, that's probably the best thing you can do. Best thing in the world, bro. Yeah, yeah man, process, bro. Process is important. Cause when you, cause first of all, I don't think you ever even really arrive. You could have a goal and you might, you might get there, but then like, then you it's just have enough. a new goal. It's yeah. not enough, no, and that, that's another thing where you could get to exactly where you wanted to be and then you get there and you realize this isn't enough. Now yeah. I, I need to, no. I need to do more yeah. or I, I'm capable of doing yeah. more. So I'll hit on how, how I ended up going Division One, but that's what happened. My goal was to get Division One, and then I got Division One, and then I might have only enjoyed it for two days, and I was like, now I have to go to the NFL. It was like immediately, you know, it like I went result driven, and bro, it just puts you in a state of anxiety, and I mean, don't get me wrong, you get a lot done, because you're just so focused exactly. on it. But, but um, it can also be crippling because you compare yourself to the guys that are in the NFL or are, you know, are, they are arrived to where you are. Also, if you, if you arrive enough, you realize that like arriving doesn't bring you happiness. No, not at all. No, not at I all. enjoyed division one. Uh, uh, we'll talk, we'll talk about that, but I enjoyed division one for two days, bro. <laughs> and then it was right back to the grind. It's, it's real life. And that, that's, yeah. that's a job in itself. That, that's a job in itself that 99% of people cannot compare to. You can't. No. 1%, it was 1% of kids go division one? Yeah. You have no idea. No idea. From, especially even coming from JUCO. Yeah. To division one yeah. and like, yes, the extras might be nice. You know, you're not, you know, you're living, you're living probably a little better than JUCO. You're oh, eating yeah. a lot I'll better talk, than I'll JUCO. I'll talk about that, bro. You know, so, so life may come a little easier, yeah. but that, that grind on the field, it's the same same grind you yeah. know what i mean it's the yeah, same yeah. same sport with the yeah. helmet and shoulder pads yeah and it doesn't change and that's yeah. the same thing on the basketball court where at the end of the day bro everything could look nice you could play in the arena but basketball still played the same way whether you're in a ymca gym or playing in i love that bro Duke, absolutely you know yeah and that's why like you could play in a big 12 where, where did y'all played in a big time 
So we, we were the biggest, we played in the biggest conference in, um, in FCS, okay. Missouri Valley. Right, yeah. So North Dakota State, University of Northern that's Iowa. Football. That's high level football. Uh, high level, bro. High so, level, yeah. And and that's great, you know what I mean? Just to come from Nassau, and now, now you're playing now you're playing on a national level where it's yeah. like, I got here, Yeah. but once you get there, it's a whole nother ball game. Oh yeah, no, it's a, it just restarts. It just restarts. So anyway, California. Uh, get to California, bro, I think my shit doesn't stink, bro. I'm like, I played at Nassau, number two in the country. El Camino wasn't that good at the time, but but they put so much money into the program, bro. They built a $40 million stadium, bro. I, like fresh Under Armour jerseys, yeah. Revo Speeds. Bro, we, at Nassau Community College, bro, it was so get it out the mud that we had Rawlings was our uniforms. Really? Oh, probably from like... Tennis uniforms. 2007. They're from the, no, from the 80s, Before? bro. Yeah. They were like... Earlier? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> they were like not, not even uniforms, bro. Those were the uniforms. The helmets, bro, basically like if you didn't have CTE, you're going to get it because like there's no padding in the helmets. Um, and then I went to El Camino who was like... Not the best program, but now we had Under Armour, you know, and I had like training facility and has to the art. Um, and, and the field, bro, there was palm trees on the field. So I had this idea, bro, that like I was the best. And uh, I was good, bro, but I saw again how politics play a role in sports. And within my first week um, at, at playing in California, um, I quickly realized that like, the coaches have their players because i didn't get california you're a new york kid in, in the west coast now you yeah. have to earn everything that yeah. you want you yeah. have to earn it yeah you have to make give them a reason to play you bro and i let me tell you something about earning it i earned it man yo i put in the work that i had to put in to end up because i i the work that i had to put in to get a scholarship out of that school was just insane because um, I wasn't, I didn't get recruited to go there. I reached out to them. Um, that, that plays a huge part in it. So why, why would they play a kid who's a nobody when they have division one bounce backs? Why? Why would they do that? There's no reason. You have you, to give them a reason. Yeah, so you that's. Have to, and you have to do it every week. Yeah, so I, re week. I realized that I wasn't going, it wasn't gonna be a, a, a success story overnight. Yeah. So I redshirted. Which I re football, I feel like you need a redshirt year. Yep. Yeah. Football, you need one. Yeah. Whether you do it your first year or after your first, you you need yeah. one. Bro, I wish I just gray shirted out of high school, but coming from Long Island, you don't even know what anything is. No. You know. No I would have gray shirted, and then I would have done a year of prep, and then I would have went. And then you would have went as a fr as a 20, 21 year old freshman, yeah. like everyone else. Yeah. And you like everyone been else. Walking into something that is, you know, I mean, compare like. Physically, bro. If football. I had so one of the reasons why I ended up go, I ended up going a little bit lower level Division One, was because I just didn't have eligibility. Only at two years, I was two for two. Right. A lot of those dudes redshirt their first year, do one, they graduate, and now you go and play in three yeah, years. Three years, one. and and you have a redshirt. Exactly. Which is like, bro. I had I had so many schools, um, big schools, bro. Hit me up, asked me about eligibility, um, and right when I sent them eligibility, they just stopped answering. Yeah. They, yeah. want, they want a younger guy, they want a guy with more years to, yeah. to develop more. Yeah. So football is more of a junior, senior, redshirt senior sport rather yeah. than basketball when a lot of one and dones or a lot of sophomores get drafted. Yeah. But yeah, football is more yeah, you, there for like the you longevity. Need, you, you really need like size, speed, strength, you need grown man, things you that need take to years a grown to. Man. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to, I feel like, make it in the yeah. NFL and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. They're not taking no kid. No, 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 no way. Um, so. Uh, that year was the <laughs> biggest grind in the entire world, man. Your red shirt year? My red shirt year, dude. Going to the gym two, three times a day, stacking the fields on top of that. Um, really like learning. Like I actually sat down and learned film, like I learned schemes. Um, and it was like from this moment on, like I made a commitment. Like I am going, I knew. I knew it, bro. I was like, I am going to play Division One football, and I was willing to do whatever it took to get there. Um, and then the next year comes, um, and it's still political. I didn't even start. Really? But when when I got my playing time, you got your opportunity. You made the I, most. When of I it. made the most of it, you know, and like and and uh, 
It was beautiful, bro. It was, it, it, I loved California. Was California was was beautiful, man. Yeah, it was man. a great opportunity, yeah, bro. bro. It's like hard to talk about because there's so much different things I can get into, and I want to like keep it like kind of condensed for the for the uh, for the podcast. But yeah. so anyway, um, it was just it was beautiful, man, and, and I'm so blessed, bro, to have that opportunity, bro. And I got so much boys now on the West Coast, which is amazing. Um, and then recruiting came, recruitment came. So I did my thing. I balled out, bro. I have the film. Yeah, we'll show. Well, I'll show some uh, some of your sacks. And yeah, your love that, huh? We'll that, <laughs> that sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, so I had the film, bro, uh, and um, I realized again that recruit recruitment is a whole another political thing. Whole another. It's a whole another. You know, like. Uh, and, that, and that's when it gets real stressful. Oh yeah, bro. Especially because as the months start coming down, especially for football, because what you go in the spring. Usually you go in the spring or yeah. the summer at least. Yeah. So. Yeah. It gets tough, you know what I mean? Once you yeah. once you finish up school and you still don't have a school. Yeah, and I was supposed to go in the spring and I didn't. Um, so now it got to this. It got so basically my recruitment went something like I had like every single Division two school in the country hit me up. I had Division two national championship, national champions, Texas A and M Commerce hit me up. Okay. Um, and I was getting scholarships, bro. It was, it was awesome. But like I was just D one or bust. You didn't want to settle. Bro. Yeah, you did not want to settle and. And uh, I, mean, I can't. I don't blame you. Yeah. If Division one is, is is reachable. I just knew. Not, I just knew I was not. a Division one player. You know. So, uh, but like looking back, I would tell a kid. Like, go where the love is. Go where you're wanted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish I could tell my 18, 19 year old self, go where you're wanted. Mm -hmm. Stop going, stop going where, where it's gonna be a cool Instagram post when yeah. you post your commitment picture or yeah. when they see you're playing in a big gym. Yeah. Bro, it does not matter. Yeah. I'd rather go to a lower level and ball out and yeah. have fun yeah. and be the man there yeah. than go Division One and and just fit in, like yeah. you know what I mean. And no one, no one knows who you are. Yep. You didn't do anything there. You're, yeah. you're gonna bounce out anyway. Yeah. It happens to so many people. I yeah. wish they would just go to the level where they're wanted and yeah. where they're gonna, you know, be the most successful. Yeah. Because I think what we need to strive for um, is happiness. And like, if if you like, if you just go Division One to post the Instagram, you'll be happy for like a couple minutes. You know, oh, you'll get I, got some... I got 500 likes. Yeah, wow, that's 60 cool. 60 comments. Everyone you know? who doesn't care said congrats. Yeah, and then you get there and you realize that you're a third string player. Um, <laughs> and the coaches have their favorites there too. It's political at Division One level two. It's a job. That's uh, their job. Oh, and, and now it's Division One. Oh no, you have no social life. You are you are completely theirs, bro. So you start feeling that pressure. And uh, I always, once I went from junior college, so my coach told me, I had a coach, bro, come up to me, and he's like, yo, Juice, my nickname was Juice, uh, which was cool, because I, I was just a high, um, high energy guy. Yeah. Um, and he was like, yo, Juice, man, like, yo, you got all these offers, like, why aren't you, why aren't you committing, bro, Texas A&M Commerce, you know, Talking State, you know, hitting you yeah. up and shit. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going D1, coach. And he looked at me, and he was kind of like, He's the, he, because he sees that over and over and over Every again. Every year, the kid doing the I'm going Division One, and he goes, "Listen, I'm gonna tell you this much right now, it's not gonna be fun." He goes, "You better have enjoyed football here, because you go Division One, and it's not fun anymore." And your your and ego I, then was I, like, "I'm like, yeah, not fun." I was like, right. "Girls, okay, <laughs> big stadiums, you know, nice jerseys, ESPN, count me in. Yeah. That sounds like fun." And uh, you realize that, like that. I mean, those things. It's just not sustainable. Like, dude. Like, cause like we you, we said you said before, consistency is important, bro. Consistency over intensity every day of the week. Yeah. Yo, if 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 you can be consistent. So like, if you go to if you go to Division Two, and your happiness is consistent because you still have time to have a social life and yep. coaches. Instead of having mandatory workouts, you work out because you want, you want to. Because you want to get better. Yeah. You like it there. Because you're happy. Because you're happy and you're wanted, so you feel happier. So if you have um, consistent happiness, you won. That's way more important than intensity. If you go Division One, you'll have four or five times a year where, oh, I'm playing against Oklahoma. Whoa, I'm happy here. And you'll feel that that's intense, you know, or, or when you post the commitment picture, that's intense Temporary. happiness. Temporary. It's temp yeah, and and bro, but it goes, it goes um, before you know it, and then, and then you're like, 
thinking, damn, is this was this the right choice? And then and then most of the time the kid, I don't know many Division One players that stay at the school for four years. Oh. Yeah, it's very, it's just not very not. The stable. faster you get out, if that's not the level for you, yeah. There, yeah. There's a level for everyone. Mm -hmm. There's a level for everyone where mm -hmm. there's a happy, a happy place on the field, off the field, mm -hmm. on the court, off the court. Yeah. For every single yeah. player, yeah. for the most, if you're a college athlete. Yeah. But bro, Division One is not for everyone. Yeah, there's Division, there, there's Division One for a reason because those are Division One guys and they yeah. belong there. Yeah, true. And if you don't belong there, that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. And people don't get that, and yeah. and they realize it's too late. Yeah, it's true. It's I'm true. sure both of us, both of us, if we go back. I would have went Division Two, Division yeah. Three. Had fun. Yeah. Had a four-year career. Yeah. Bounce, I bounced around four schools. You bounced around three yeah, schools. Three schools. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I mean, and and that's for the younger kids watching. Anyone, yeah. just bro, go where you're wanted. And yeah. Go where you know you're gonna be yeah. happy for four years or two years at JUCO. Yeah. It's all about. And don't believe what they tell you in recruiting. They're not your friends. They're, They're gonna not. tell you what you want to hear. Yeah, I, I, I extremely disliked. I, had, I basically had a, um, like, traumatic events go on at Missouri State, which I'll get into now. Yeah, yeah. That's so, 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 so after El Camino, recruitment was all Division Twos. All Division Twos. Missouri State comes in late, and you're like, on my birthday, bro. Really? On my birthday, wow, that's dude. Dope. I get it. So, so, um, all of a sudden, Missouri State defensive line coach follows me on Twitter goes call me I call him immediately yeah. he goes how tall are you six <laughs> two how big are you 230 pounds he's like, oh all right gotta get that weight up he goes he goes what do you bench I lied I was like three 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 eighty five you know <laughs> he's like what do you squat 600 you know I'm lying. I'm just lying bro I was I, I was a big weight room guy but bro like I'm just wasn't I wasn't engineered to pull 600 pounds no. you know like I was engineered Not many people are no 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 but like they do that to you at the next at division one they like make you do that um, so I'm sitting there lying and he goes he goes all right son he goes uh, what I'm gonna need you to do is I'm gonna need you to go I'm gonna need you to send me a picture of you on the scale and I'm like, all right. So I lied. I, I said I was 230. I was like 215. So um, I dropped a lot of weight. I, 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 tend, I, I went from power to finesse, bro, because I was like, that's my play. Yeah. I was like, I'm Italian Von, Von Miller. You know, like, that's, yeah. how I'm, that's how I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I ended up taping um, weight. taping weights to to, my, and I got I was shirtless, so I, it looked like I, I didn't have anything. But I ended up taping weights, bro, to my to my leg. Really? And I, I on the scale 230. I sent him the video. Calls me. He goes, son, I'm extremely excited. So, so to tell you that here you're on a full scholarship to, to Missouri, Missouri State, State University, yeah. to Missouri State. And then all of a sudden the head coach gets on. And at the time, bro, Missouri State. So about Missouri State, it wasn't like a big time school, um, but the head coach from Mizzou. Not the, not the head coach, the defensive coordinator from Mizzou okay. just came over and brought his staff over, bro. Really? And 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 um. And that's SEC, right? SEC, bro. Yeah. Oh, any coach in the NFL. Okay. So he gets on the phone. He goes, he goes, he goes, hey son. Oh, you know, like congratulations. Like we're gonna set this visit up. And bro, like I'll never forget. I was in my living room, and this is why JUCO is cool. This is why. Right here. This is the exact moment. I'm sitting down, bro, and I'm in my living room, and. You'd expect like a big party, you know, like the banners fly and division one. Here it is, here's the moment. This, and it's not that, it's you and your boy who, um, it's you and your boy, just you and one other person in this living room and there's gnats and fruit flies <laughs> and, and people are sleeping on the couch, you know? Yeah. And you're like, yo, I just went division one, yo. And like, you're expecting like these beautiful speakers to come on, but, but, but you just put your phone on. Bro, and I'll never forget, like we played, I'm so excited <laughs> and I just can't hide. Bro, and, 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 and that was a beautiful, that was a beautiful moment, man. Uh, so that was like, damn, division one. So I did live in that surreal, it did feel good to arrive. I went on the visit, and that was like, bro, coach, like, visit is, is they big, flew me man. out, me and my dad out. I was like, dad, look what, look what we did. Look what we did. Like, he was proud. bro, proud, bro. They gave me a, like a penthouse suite, bro, in the nicest hotel in Springfield, Missouri, bro. Um, we went out to Division One clubs, finally. Oh, man, what, what a good time. Really? Uh, but once I got, once I got there, 
I quickly realized that the allure of Division One. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was cool. Exactly. I had a very cool moment, like like I said, the first two days when I got there, bro. My books were free, a thousand dollar stipend every, month, every right? single month. Yeah. Um, all this gear, I, bro. If I if my if I needed cleats, I go to the equipment guy and say I need cleats. Another pair of cleats. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Adidas, right? Yeah, yeah. Adidas. Bro, Adidas. Yeah. Adidas was cool at the time too. Um, so yeah, that was a whoa blessing. Um, but then. Uh, I got to Missouri State, man, and uh, summer workouts come. Mm -hmm. Bro, I am bawling, bawling, bro. I was like the best version of myself at the time. Really? Oh, but check this out. When I was getting recruited, I started getting back pain, bro. And, then, and that's where it started? That's where it started, that's yeah. Where that's where all the back, the back issues started, yeah. And for football, that's... Oh, you can't have that, that's bro. The worst. That's probably the worst thing. Football. Oh. I mean, as a defensive guy, at least. I mean, offensively, what? Probably your knees. Yeah. Or if you're a running back, knees yeah. is bad. But yeah. defensive side, your back is. I think just life side, your back. Yeah. Like ancient, like like Chinese medicine, bro. They say you're only as old as your back, as your spine is. You know, like you're only as healthy as your spine is. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of had a choice in my off season before I even went to Division One to like stop playing football. And I was like, nah, I'm going to Division One. Did your doctor tell you to stop? Yeah, they, they were like, this. we advise you against. I mean, they, they said because like I, my problems were my lumbar, not my cervical spine. Mm -hmm. They were like, you could still like play, you know, but like they advised me not to. Yeah. But I did, I, w I did it anyway. Most programs in the country have absolutely no idea how to strengthen condition. No, no dude, no idea. Not, not, not the right way. No, not, no, not yeah, the right not, way. Not no, the right they'll, way. They're, they're, they're gonna put you. They'll get you big, fast, and strong. Work for sure. Stuff, but they, because it's, it's temporary. Yeah. They're gonna get you big while you're there. Yeah, and they're that's gonna, all I care. And then, ten years down the road, you, you're waking up every morning like pain. Yeah. Because there, there's you. a way to work out and there's a way to lift. Bro, the training staff would give us Advil, like just like, 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 like. We, like oh I need Advil like they would just ibuprofen ibuprofen everyone's hitting ibuprofen because we're in all this pain because we're we're li we're, uh, we're having three four days where we're lifting we're we're working out I mean we're we're running so anyway um bro but I got there and I'm balling bro I had all the coaches come up to me I had I had I had one coach come up to me bro pulled me aside he goes he goes yo Juice you're the future of this program really he goes like. And not, not based off of talent, but like right when I got there, bro, I was already breaking the team down. Cause I was always like that, you know, like that Waking was just- Waking everyone up and, and, and like to it, yeah. I was that guy, bro. And, that, and that's what you need. I feel like, especially coming as a Jugo thing, you got you got to make something that's going to make you pop, make you stand out. Yeah. And if you're vocal, I feel like in any sport, yeah. bro, you, you that's half the battle. Being vocal yeah. and, and showing that you're a leader. Yeah. Everyone needs a leader, so. Yeah, but you can't be vocal and be, sh and be shallow. No, no, you, know, you, you ha have to like yeah. actually bring it. And, but I was like that, bro. I was, I, was a, I was a leader, bro. And the coach was like, yo, like this team is gonna win or lose this year based off of you. Bro, coaches are writing me essays, bro, to my phone at night. Yo, you good? Everything good? Really? How's the room? You know, like making sure like, yo, I'm so excited you're here. Wow. And then I hurt my back, bro. One day I'm in the weight room and they have us doing like 315 pound clean, cleans, bro, for like 10 reps, five sets. And I'm do I do this clean, you know, like, uh -huh. and and bro, all of a sudden I hear my back just, really, and I was like, yep, that's it. I knew it immediately. Immediately I was like, yeah, it's over for me. Um, that's sick. I one, had to, one thing. One th one thing, bro. Every football was just taken from me, bro, just like that. And uh, the coaches from that moment on just turned. Just turn, bro. Oh, because because you, you don't you don't bring them any you don't bring anything to the table for yep. them anymore. Nope. They don't care who you are as a student, mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. They care about what what goes on in between those lines, and and in the gym, in the weight room. Oh my God. Yeah. And once you once they realize, oh, he, he can't do anything for me. Yep. Yeah, that's what happened. Next next man up. That's football. Yep. And and that's something, you know what I mean? I didn't play football in my life, but football is probably my favorite sport. I like yeah. football almost more than basketball. Just yeah. the, the idea of it, the sport, everything. It's, I mean, so it's a it's a uh, warrior sport. You yeah, know? It's a, but it's next hurt. man up, bro. Yeah. It's next man up, and it's like, you, you signed up for that sport, so you, yeah. you knew what it what it took. Yeah, and I'm, I'm taking their money, I'm taking their stipend, and I can't play because my back is just ruined. Uh, I tried, bro. I did everything I could, bro, to heal my back in that short amount of time. Because, bro, also, my dreams just went right underneath me. I spent 12 years trying to get Division One. 
bro. And it's first game of the year, Oklahoma State on Fox Sports 1, Boone Pickens <laughs> Stadium. 70,000 people capacity in front of millions on Fox Sports. Bro, I, you know how many times I envisioned Jake Moscato, you know, like, look at this kid. With like, the sack, yeah. With the sack, bro. I, and, and, and I like, I was gonna have, I was gonna do it, bro. I was gonna go to the NFL. I was just relentless, bro. Like, really? yeah, oh yeah, bro, for sure. Like, without a doubt, I have no doubt in my mind, bro. I'm, I'm just like that, you know. Like, I'm a big believer in belief. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking stuff into existence, bro. Manifestation, bro. Mike Studd's big on that. Yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. Anything that I've ever done in my life, bro, I knew I was gonna do it. You know, anything. It's uh, a law of attraction. I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, think it's a corny thing, but like. Uh, I believe in. It. I read you read Seven Laws, Spiritual Successors. No, no, you that's a good. It, no, it's good. Deepak show. Chopra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you gotta read it. Yeah, no, I should, I, I, I should I read that. I got it from Mike Studd, and then I read it. I, I listened to the audio, the yeah. audible of it. I used to listen to it before I go to sleep. I just yeah. listen to one, uh, one chapter of it. Yeah. One, one of the laws before yeah. I go to sleep, and just have it in my brain as. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. You have to reprogram like your brain to like re to like re, um, to. Like uh, what is it? The consciousness, like consciousness, yeah. yeah. Like conscious, the conscious mind, the unconscious, the unconscious mind. mind. You have to reprogram, like, because yo, like, we're for what because we have these adults, right, that tell us we're not good enough, and you know, we're not athletic, and and we, we create like our identity is one of um, a lot of people are, are scared and they're fearful, mm -hmm. and it, it, they have a lot of self-limiting thoughts, um, and you realize that like you can very well have a lot of um, self gaining thoughts and happiness thoughts and loving thoughts the same way but you just have to reprogram so bro, i fall asleep with affirmations in my ear every night bro yeah. it's funny yeah yeah and yeah that that's a huge thing where you gotta just do it so mm -hmm. you know you're you're going from the mindset of like i was i'm about to go to the nfl and then it's just taken from you yep. in one in one moment yep just taken yeah that's that's what happened dude i i couldn't i couldn't play at oklahoma state which crushed me I couldn't play at our uh, first uh, Division One game against North Dakota State, and bro, like, I, I just division. How, how was your mental at that point? Like, from going from Nassau to El Camino, mm -hmm. getting Division One. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the league, and now, now life starts over. Where everything you ever did, put everything into, is just taken. Like, I couldn't. Like, I've had some bad injuries with basketball yeah. and stuff, but I'm still going. Football's a different. A different angle yeah, the, where an injury, the, an injury is, is, that's it. Yeah, and the back is weird because it's not like a wrist where you can tape your wrist. The back is like, yo, I couldn't get out of pain, bro. I'm in pain right now. All day. Dude, yeah. look at the way I'm, I have to sit, I have to tilt, I have to hike my hips a certain way. Uh, still, because my back was just, bro, like, not only did they do me a disservice of, of uh, injuring, they, uh, they injured me, bro, because... Um, of their relentless strength training program that is just, we're football players, but we're not powerlifters. We don't need to be doing that. No. Um, so not only did they injure me, bro, um, they, um, they, uh, while I was injured, mm -hmm. they were still making me front, 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 uh, front squat 335 pounds. Still had to go to workouts. Just because, just, just because yeah. they can. Yeah, just because, bro. They made me, I was very adamant against not, against not getting cortisone injections they made me get two very traumatic experiences bro um to one day bro i just couldn't take it anymore also they turned the entire team on me bro really yeah the all the trainer because they, they told the trainers to tell everyone i was lying oh he's faking it yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah so then everyone was like because bro like when you're vocal one of the problems with being vocal is like then you have to like play that role out and i was bro i was a dog but then like I, once I got injured, they're like, yo, where's your energy now? It puts a target on your back. And people thought I was faking, and I was like, yo, if only you knew, man. I spent <laughs> two weeks, bro. I spent two weeks. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep, because I couldn't get comfortable. So I spent two, the only position that I was able to get comfortable in was on the couch in the locker room. In the locker room, bro, with my feet. Like that? Like this, bro. I did two weeks, two weeks like that. That's terrible, yeah. No, I couldn't imagine. Bro, crying every night. Pain. Calling my mom, ma, I can't, you know. My and you're in Missouri. Yeah, <laughs> and also, bro, like my relationship with my parents was good because they were finally proud of me. And then, if football is gone, then what am I, they're not gonna be proud of me anymore. 
you know? Yeah, but they are. No, they are. You know they are, but, but in the moment. That, in the that, moment, that, 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 that was the that's, thought. Yeah, yeah, that's your mindset where you're like, damn, mm -hmm. like everyone everyone who had me had my back, I feel like I let them down now in something that was completely out of your control. Yeah, bro. So going so, from. So, yeah, so. Yeah, Missouri State. So now then, done, right? basically, I, I got into this point, bro, where I don't wish ill will on anyone, bro, and I got nothing but love for people. And I'm, whatever resentment I hold in my heart, bro, I'm really trying to, because I believe, bro, you shouldn't resent anyone or anything, no matter what happens no. to you, bro, because it's just poison, bro. It just hurts you. Yeah. So, I, I uh, one day I got into it with my strength trainer, because I, I was like, yo, why are you making me do this? Why am I front cleaning? Front, I mean, front squatting. Like, I just had a cortisone injection this morning. You know, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to play football. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. You know, why, like, why is, why, why like, and I, I, they were doing it because they wanted me to leave so they can give scholarship to someone else. Um, but I got into it with a strength coach and I ended up leaving the workout, which you don't do yeah. at Division One. You don't, you don't leave. And I left, bro. Uh, you don't even do that at, at PAL football, you know, like, yeah, no, and, and I did that. It. I did that. Um, I like literally just left the workout. I'm like, yo, fuck you, man. Really? Like, I, I got in his face, bro. We we're going to fight and shit. And then I got called to the coach's office and I walked in and I was like, yo, I'm done playing. I, I told him straight up, I was, like, yo, I was like, yo, you guys treat kids like like horses. And when they get hurt, you kill them. And that's what you did to me. I was like, I don't even like football anymore because of you guys. I was like, my back is forever going to be fucked. When I, I don't believe in, like now my, my, my belief now is my back is going to be completely healed. Yeah. But at the time, I was like, I'm going to have to deal with this forever because you guys like really, really screwed me over you know yeah um and he was basically just like you don't know what you're talking about whatever blah 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 and i told him i was like yo i'm done and uh that week i left bro i came home dropped out of college bro uh what month is this that that was october of october, october of 2019 2019 and now you're back home in long island back home back, back with your parents back with my parents yeah now what now you're like what the what kind of journey is that bro i'm back at the beginning yeah exactly where you started yeah with same same bed you know? It's crazy. Yeah, like, dude, it was it was, it was almost surreal. Like, bro, going from Nassau to California to Missouri to then hopes of being in the NFL to now. Not only am I back home, but I, my back hurts. <laughs> now, you're, now you can't you can't you can't lift. No. You can't lift. You can't, can't really lift. work out. Nope. Now, like, we gotta you gotta find a job. Yeah. Right? And and that was the. That was one of the hardest things. Are you? Cause are you? Are you not? Are you still playing ball? Yeah. 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 So like, left. so, I think that this is actually really cool to hit on. Cool topic maybe once athletes are done playing. If you have athletes on that are done, it would be cool to talk about like what what you do do after ball, because uh, sports, especially when you're really passionate about them, they become an identity. And if your identity is taken from you, it's about one of the most dangerous things that can happen because you don't have anything to stand. That was your foundation. That was the yeah. thing that was keeping you afloat. And you don't have anything to stand on. People don't know what to do when they're done. Oh, I had no idea, bro. No idea. So what happened to me was I, I was home and uh, I didn't know what to do. And one day I'm sitting down and I'm on the phone within like three weeks of being home. And uh, my heart starts racing. And my, 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 boy, my, my breath gets shallow and my arm goes numb. Mm -hmm. And I was a biology major, so I was like, oh, I'm having a heart attack. Really? Yeah, bro. So I uh, I called the ambulance, and I'm freaking out. At this point, I'm freaking out now. I'm like, I'm having a heart attack. Yeah. I'm gonna die. Um, and I go in the ambulance, I get to the hospital, and they're like, yeah, you know, they, do, they do the AKG, and they're like, yeah, you're good. I was like, I'm good. Should I have, what, like a panic attack? Well, I, I didn't know, what, the, what, what it, we didn't know, they didn't know what oh, it was. The they were just like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it was a it was a panic attack. Yeah. Looking back, but I didn't know what I thought anxiety was bullshit. I grew up with my mom had had antidepressants in the cabinets, bro, and I I would just make fun of her, cause like I would I just didn't think it was it no, was you, don't you know, know real. I didn't okay. know. Um, and then the next day I go to work, like nothing happened. I was I was now a per, I was now a personal trainer, bro. Division one football player. Now I'm personal Sorry, training. Personal trainer. Um, I think that was when we had a little run in LA Fitness, and we were like. You know, because I was training the kids for basketball. And yeah. I was like, yo, let's start something. But I was into it because I'm I'm an into it guy. Yep. I'm a passion guy. So I was like, all right, I'm a personal trainer now. I'm going to try to get into it. But like, I think my soul yearned for more. 
Um, Deep down, you knew that wasn't what that you wasn't it. To do. I was like, it wasn't going to do it for you. Yeah, it wasn't going to be sustainable. It was like the intense. It was like intensity over. It was like intensity over consistency. Like I was intensely happy about being passionate about something, but my consistency was just all off. Wasn't there. Um, so, uh, next day I'm at work, and all of a sudden, bro, my face like drops, and then my heart starts racing, and my arm goes numb, and I'm like, oh, I'm I'm having a stroke now. Yeah, bro, crazy, very weird. And it could have had something to do with my spine because the the, ner the nervous system is all connected. Yeah. But you I went to- threw something off with your brain. I don't know what it was, yeah. bro. But I went to the ER um, and uh, they're like, oh, yeah, you're good. And I was like, what are you, I was like, I was like, I am not good. <laughs> So that, ha that happened for a, that happened for a month. Yeah, you, you know when something's up yeah. with you. Yeah. Because you when you're an athlete, bro, you're in tune with your body. Yeah. You know, see, so I, I, bro, I could tell you right now, like, like what I, I need to go home and stretch certain muscles, like, you know, like I, I I'm very in tune with what, what's going on inside my body, um, and I'm like, I'm like, doctor, I'm not good. He, and, and, and then he's like, no, you're good. Like I'm, I'm telling you, you're good. Like maybe you should see like a psychiatrist. I'm like psychiatrist. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know. Uh, long I'm, story. I'm mentally fine. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a beast. You know who I am? You know what I do to you know what I do to people on the field? You know what I'm saying, bro? Shit like that, you know. Uh, anyway, bro. So uh, that went on for a month, and uh, anxiety attacks, anxiety attacks, anxiety attacks to the point where like I was WebMDing, and I convinced myself that I had ALS. Self-diagnosed yourself? I self-diagnosed, bro. So I spent a month in pity of like I'm leaving my family, bro. I was like, yo, I'm leaving my parents behind. I'm leaving my, I, I was like, I was like, this is it. I was like, this is it. Like, yo, you could really, and that put me in touch with like, yo, you could really die at any moment. I was like very, I was like, I was like larger than life. And I didn't know that like life is a gift, bro. It's a beautiful thing. Like, and it's not something to be taken for granted. And that was like a beautiful thing because I was faced with death. I really thought what you thought. Yeah. And not only death, bro. And I thought my muscles were going to start decaying on me and I was going to have to like, that's how strong your mind is that you can put this whole like stigma and, and reality on yeah. yourself and you have no idea. Yeah, and, no idea. You know, I'm sure you'll get, you'll get into about what, what it really was. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, right. what, so what, when was that like the realization of, you know, what, what was really going on with your mind and your body? And so I, 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 I saw every single specialist you could see. I saw a neurologist, I saw a cardiologist, a gastro guy. I went to all different doctors, you know, got a bunch of opinions. And uh, it all, they were all like, you know, your brain's great, your heart, I mean, you have the cardiovascular fitness of a Navy SEAL, you know, like, yeah, you, your insides, your gut biome's perfect, like, I don't know, your blood works great, like, like, dude, like, you have anxiety. And I got di uh, diagnosed for GAD, generalized anxiety. Um, and uh, I was like, all right, I have uh, anxiety, huh? And one of the scariest things, bro, about that, that moment was when I was a kid and I'd have a bad dream, I'd wake up from the dream and be like, <gasps> you know that, like, <gasps> you're like, yep. bro, I'd wake up, I, I'd wake up and be in reality. I'd be like, <gasps> like, reality, like, today, I'm not a football player. I am going to experience anxiety. Like, I'd want to go back to bed. So when you wake up from a bad dream, you wanna like, you're so happy to be awake. Yeah. I'd wake up and my bad dream was now my 18 hour reality, bro. Man. Scary. So how do you come back from that? God comes in. <laughs> Listen, bro, like, if you're agnostic, cool, you know, like, I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with that, but like for me, bro, I'm just a big fan of, of, of God, not in, not in like religious, a religious sense, just like, a, I don't know, I'll talk about that another day. But anyway, uh, so, so, I discovered David Goggins, bro, and I would get his book, Can't Hurt Me, and I was so freaking out and scared all the time, like that I, that I had ALS that I, and I was going to die, that I just had to do uh, one foot in front of the other, bro, like a little little wins every single day, so I'd read like a page, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'd read two, and then I read three, four, five, six, and I started just reading his book, and then I was able to like go to the gym again, and then I was able to journal, and then... I was able to go back to work. I couldn't go. I couldn't work because I was so like just freaking out yeah. all day long. Um, and then uh, that book saved my life, bro. Really? Can't hurt me. Yeah, can't hurt me. Great, great book. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the other book. So, so, so then I go to the gym. And now when I when I would go out of the house, I'd still be freaking out. 
but I'd be able to deal with it. Okay, so you had it under control. I had it, I had it under control, but like, but you still got to make money. So I still had to work and like, bro, I'd be having anxiety attacks, but working just like, you know, like bro, people all in the hell, time. Yeah. in hell. Um, but then I met this dude at the gym and he recommended this book called The Alchemist. And alchemy is turning like any metal into gold. Okay. And uh, emotional alchemy, what the book is about, is turning like your negative emotions into love. So turning fear into love, turning hate into love, or, or, um, or angst into peace, you know, um, doubt into knowing, like that type of thing. Transition. Like yeah. So that book is a, yeah. was a beautiful book. And then another book came in, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, which is, now it's about Taoism. And then I read the Tao Te Ching, which is like the Taoist Bible. And then I read, you know, and all these books start coming in, the spirituality. I start listening to Mike Studd's podcast, bro. Yep. Wait, this dude named Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer, yeah. Wayne Dyer is the yeah. man. Yeah. Yo, he comes in and then all of a sudden, bro, like I didn't have to, I didn't take any antidepressants. I didn't seek out a therapist. I didn't seek out a religion. I didn't um, get into dr drugs or alcohol. And dude, nothing against all of that. Everyone has their own avenue. Everyone has of their, dealing with things. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, some of them are definitely destructive, and I'd probably advise you not to do that. But if that's right. the only thing that's keeping you afloat, like, go for it. You know. But but for me, bro, I was kind of able to do it in the. I was able to do it in a way that was just like. It's like the purest it was just way. So, so pure, bro. Yeah. It was like you want to know how you want to know how you're gonna get through this. Like, dude, you're gonna take responsibility of everything that's going on, and you're going to turn your fear into love, you know, and you're gonna turn your your self doubt into confidence. Yeah. And like, yo, we're gonna sit, and I'm gonna sit down, and bro, I started meditating. I, I need to get into it, bro. I, I could to. help. I could put you on. Yes. Bro. After this, we'll yeah. definitely get. We could I do it. We could do a meditation. Yeah. yeah no, I, Me I want to. I need to wake up and meditate when I wake up, not yeah. check my phone and, and so much toxic don't, that's shit. That's the worst thing yeah, you can do. Yeah, that's the worst thing. Yeah, if you're watching this, don't wake up. Don't check your phone right when you wake up. Give it yeah. like an hour. Yeah. Go, I, yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll, about we'll that talk about after because I need to get into that. That's, yeah. that's huge. I yeah. feel like that's huge. Yeah, but I, I know we're, we're coming up on a, a, long, a long time. So basically to summarize everything, um, the past two years of my life, I thought, I thought, bro, I think that like conflict is one of those things and, and, and something going wrong is one of the things that scares people the most. But I could tell you based off of experience from, uh, from losing the division one scholarship and my dream shattering in front of my face and then having that terrible bout with anxiety and the love of my life, bro, just ripped my heart out a month ago. Um, that I, I know what it's like to experience conflict and loss. And let me tell you something, bro. 100% of the time, you always come out stronger because of it. Yeah, you have to go through things to, you have to, to, you to have really to. understand like how bad things can get and, yeah. then, and then some really like how good you have it most of the time. Yeah, there's a reason, bro. Like all that stuff had to happen because now I'm a, I got into filmmaking, which is the, my, I love it more than I love football. I got into filmmaking. Um, I've met so many beautiful people in my life because of the loss yeah. that I faced. Uh, I'm, on the, I'm sitting here on this podcast with you right now. And who knows, bro, if, 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 if this podcast just helps out one, I know it was story based, it wasn't like a lot of philosophy based, but if it just helps out one person, bro, like we won, yeah. we succeeded, you yeah. know? Um, so like I'm a big everything happens for a reason guy. So I think it's important, bro, when things get tough along your journey, just realize that, bro, it's just a part of the process, man. It's all a part of what is. Yeah. And if everything was good all the time, then good wouldn't mean anything because you wouldn't know what, because yeah. you wouldn't have bad to compare it to. Well, they say like if the sun, if the sun was always shining, then you yeah. would never know, you know, never know. How, how important it is or how beautiful it is yeah but and I mean even touching on you know what you was talking about once you your mindset changed and everything you know completely different person from who you were last year and Ooh, two years ago yeah. like two different people yeah so I want you to talk about your foundation that you started selfless right, right. and cool. touch on that because that video was dope I probably watched it like three times just yeah. watching it you know what I mean Thanks just so listen much, to because it's like it's pure, like yeah. you could tell, like it came from like your heart, and like yeah, right you, from the heart, you said you didn't even want to post it, but yeah. I don't know, I liked it, like I liked the message that yeah. that you were given, and yeah, um, yeah, touch on that, and and you know, talk about what you're doing now from you know the transition from Division One football player, NFL dream, yeah, and now you're a videographer, yeah. photographer, whole different ball game yeah. of life, yeah, two different people, like two different, you know, night and day, yeah. And then talk about your foundation that you have going and cool because i cool. think that's dope and love to 
you know, I'd love to get my hands up with anything with you, like going far with that, because yeah, yeah. I think this is something good and could be a huge project. Yeah, I think I think people need uh, right now. Uh, sidebar and then I'll get into how everything happened but yeah. I think people uh, mental health is so important right now bro yeah. it's like it can't be because I, I experienced anxiety and like I my life has been pretty good so if I was able to experience and, and I, I'm a fighter so if I was able to experience anxiety if you get anxiety and you're not as adapt uh, as um, as whatever if, if you if you aren't good at handling stressful situations you'll kill yourself yeah if I gave someone my mind, bro, they would have killed themselves because my mind was stuck in these these fearful thought loops mm -hmm. all day long. Um, so I think mental health is, is is the most important thing in the world. And I think right now, um, unfortunately, especially with the election going on and, and uh, thing, social issues happening, um, I think that negativity, bro, is, is, is extremely apparent and you can go on your timeline right now and in 10 minutes you could see 20 like traumatic things going on in the world yeah like yeah we're not so we're not human beings bro like we're not even meant to like live with more than 100 people you know like we're we're like small tribal people uh, and now you can go on this phone and get blasted with all this information about um this person uh like all these murders and death and and uh hate amongst race you know and uh um, it's hard i try to stay up i want I, I use it more as a platform for yeah. my stuff now, for that's my the podcast. That's to spread good. And, and that's, what it was, that's what it was made for. When Facebook started, and started yeah. it was to stay connected with people. Yeah. And it was to, I mean, I feel like a networking opportunity yeah. where you can, you can reach someone across the country and make something happen without physically yeah. coming in contact yeah. with them. But like now it's just so negative and so toxic where I'm slowly and slowly starting to get away from it. But yeah. you do need it in the aspect yeah. where in your field with videography, you have to oh, post yeah, your no, stuff to, and yeah, now yeah. show content. So that's why I like something it. tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so like for me, I just realized that, all right, like if there is going to be all this negative stuff, maybe to combat it, I can just post positive stuff. I can post good material because the things that helped me, I mean, like I can, I can offer people and I don't know, sh I don't know shit. But I can I can push people towards the direction of people that know things like mm -hmm. know the things that I've learned from, um, and I can offer like some helpful exercises and and per, if I can provide anyone inspiration or encouragement, bro, you know if I can get you out of the door and if I can get that same person that was having the anxiety attack like I was that couldn't go to work at least to work in order to meet the person that's going to give them the book that's going to change their life that's enough for me. Yeah. So that was the that was the purpose and the goal. So basically. I, in the past two years, I started a couple of different businesses, all had something to do with some type of social media thing where I'd get on camera and I would talk to people um, about love and inspiration and just how powerful the human um, spirit is and, and, and mindset, conscious mind, subconscious mind, the same thing that Mike Studd is on, you know, uh, reprogramming um, and just, I wanted to get on camera and post just positive stuff. Give people um, a way to get back in, in, in control of their lives. Um, and the things that I started failed. And uh, I realized it was because, um, well, I don't know if it was because, but I, I just, I wanted to offer, not only did I want to offer people good content, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to give people high level production. So like what we have right now, like if, if it was just us sitting, this would sound terrible because of the, the birds and yeah. the, but we have mics, we have a professional camera, you know, um, I, I wanted to offer that type of thing um, to, I, I wanted to offer, I wanted to combine like not only good, helpful, positive content, but also bring like some Martin Scorsese type of uh, production. And it turned into like this beautiful app, this beautiful um just train this momentous train of uh, of passion, and uh, now like I'm starting to do it. Like bro, like um, when, tomorrow I'm shooting uh, one of my first video videos for Selfless. Okay. Um, and it's gonna be um, me, you know, just spreading positivity, you know, telling people what I think the brand represents, what it means to be a selfless individual, not only not being selfish, but also lessening the grips of your ego, the thing, um, the, the ego, the, the thing that um, is giving, 
is telling you just how not worthy you are and just how um, weak you are, you know, like lessening that a little bit, put giving more power back to the individual. Um, so like that was my goal behind starting some type of um, medium to promote positivity. Right. And now that's what I'm doing. So selfless, how it came about was I was in Miami and I was fresh off the breakup and I'm emotionally bro, just raw. And I saw so many, I saw so many homeless people um, next to Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And I was just like, yo man, like, let me go. I wanted to go up to the homeless people and see what they're all about. Cause in my mind, I thought like they were all like kind of bad, you know, and don't, don't want to work. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the mindset I try to have with it, like, you know, obviously some of them have done it to themselves. Yeah. No one knows their story. Yeah. No one knows what they've been through or what they've yeah. had to, but, bro, if I have a dollar, I'll give them a dollar. You know what I mean? Right. You ask for a dollar, you're hungry, I'll get yeah. you some, you know what I mean? I'll get you food, whatever, bro, because, yeah. like, that's another thing. Like, we we worry about what shoes we got or yeah. uh, if, if our shirt's nice or, yeah. you know, what what we want to eat, not, not if we're going to eat. Yeah. And we wake up every morning and we don't even think about it but i've been trying to wake up every morning and like mike stud like say thank you yeah just wake up and say i do thanks. that too those just, are the, those are the first words i say in the morning just wake up and say thank you and I've, I've been doing it with myself where i've gotten into a habit now i'm probably like two months in yeah i've never said told anyone i did it or yeah. want to you know what i mean yeah but it's just something in the inside like i just feel like i have to because we're crazily blessed where we don't have to worry about stuff like that yeah but yeah go into you know, what, what was you thinking when you see, you're, you, you see Ferraris and then yeah. you see someone that, that can't even buy a, a sandwich? Yeah, and, and, and I know like people, you know, really badmouth capitalism and, and this is probably a, a product of capitalism. And, but I, I, it's, I, it wasn't even about, for me, it wasn't even a political thing. It was just, I just wanted to go up to these people and see like, what's their, what are their stories? Bro, the brand is just something to push um, human connection because I think human connection's at an all-time low. And it, it's just as simple as like, maybe it's just doing three nice things a day for people, you know? Maybe it's that. Or like, like for me, I, it's asking yourself, am I being selfish? Where can I, where, where can I give others what I have to give? Like open to everything and attached to nothing is one of the most beautiful things that you should aim for in this entire world. And Wayne Dyer is, is the man, the myth, the legend, because he has like, he's full of those types of things. Yeah. And I use them in my everyday life. I'll think, am I being open right now? Like, am I being open? You know, am I being closed-minded? Am I being too attached right now? You know, what would, what would my high, what would what would my higher self want? Yeah, you know, what the best version of me. Yeah, expect. Is it going to be happy that that I spent five days crying? You know, like, and, and, and obviously get your emotions out, bro. But um, at some point, you know, there's a part of you that is completely. Whole. And not only is it whole, it's like a super, it's like a super saiyan, bro. It can do it. It can do anything, bro. And once you start to realize that you're more powerful than you think you are, and you get in touch with that thing you know, that is just this all powerful knowing, um, that's when life really starts to get fun because you realize there's nothing in life that you can't accomplish, that you can't do. And then it just, and then life just becomes about creation. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. Like why? Why not? Why not? Why can't you do it? Would it? That's a, yeah, that's a huge way of like thinking of life, because why not? Yeah. Yeah, that, why I mean, not? that's how I try to win. Like, yeah. Why can't this be one of the biggest yeah. podcasts in the world? Why can't it? Yeah. Why can't you be the best videographer? Why can't you shoot? I'm going to be, bro. Exactly. <laughs> so when I decided to become, so I decided to become a filmmaker two and a half months ago. And the day I decided to become a filmmaker, I didn't know anything about filming. And I wrote on my board, I, my big whiteboard, I am going to be the best filmmaker in the world. I look at it every day. Wake up and look at it, and that, that's an affirmation right there where you just speak it into existence, see it, and just fuel your brain with it every day. Yeah. But even the work that you're putting out now looks like people, like someone has been doing it for years. Honestly. Yeah. Honestly. Like the, 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 I think so, too. The, you're doing very well. The, I, think, I think when... So this is actually really a really cool topic, bro. Um, when passion... Purpose, you're like unlimited because you could be okay. So I haven't talked about this in a while, so maybe it's not going to come out as, as good as I'd like it. But um, people just ask, you know, a lot of people are giving me props and, and they're asking me, 
in a non-narcissistic way, how were you able to get so good so quickly? And it was just one of those things that like, my purpose is to um, change the well-being of collective society. My purpose is to, is to promote positivity in a world that rewards negativity. My purpose is to help others, provide meaning, bring love back, C connection, human connection. Like that's my purpose, right? So passion was like my medium. Like if that's my purpose, there's a million ways you can do that. You know, I can public speak, I can become a journalist, you know, like whatever. But passion was the medium that allows me to do that. So now with filmmaking, I really can, it was so easy for me to learn because like, I was like, if I learn filmmaking, I can really change uh, people's lives. So my passion, which was filmmaking, met my purpose of helping others. And it like, I wasn't even learning. I tell people all the time, I didn't, it was effortless. I was completely in that flow God state yeah. of just everything was like, dude, I spent hours and hours and hours and hours on YouTube just learning. And and I look at it, a lot of people look at it, when, when people don't, don't do something that they like doing, they look at it, there's two ways to, because I had a responsibility to learn, but there's two ways to look at responsibility. You can look at it as an opportunity or you can, you can worry about it. And I always choose, like today, I get to wake up and learn about Aperture. Yeah. Today, I get to wake up and invest money into a, an expensive camera that's going to make me broke. I get to do those things, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Instead of saying, oh, I'm going to be broke now because I bought that camera. You have, to, you have to use everything as like a stepping stone and as, as bro, it's, it's an opportunity. Yeah. One, like, I feel like if you half-ass stuff or don't go all in on stuff, you're never going to... Bro, it's either all in or yeah. don't do it or do something else that you want to go all right. in to. Find, dude, find that all in purpose. Yeah, and, that, and that's the only way you're going to make it when you go all in to stuff. You can get lucky and, yeah. and, and be half-assed and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of athletes that, do they love the sport? Really? No. They love the money, though. Yeah, and they're very talented yeah. and they're good. Yeah. But I feel like when you can find that point, like you said, with passion yeah. and it's like... And it's pure and it comes natural that's yeah. the only time that and your, your motivation behind your passion right like, like there, there's a purpose behind the thing you know like i'm sure like you said when you watched that video you were like dude that was real like your words yeah I think that's why i came you out can tell, so like it was raw and that's what you said you was like i want it to be raw and and that's what for the message that you're trying to give it's the only way it's going to be taken the right way if yeah. it's raw yeah. if that seems forced there's so many people that come out here and I want to help people. I want to make right. I want to do right. right. I want to make the world better. Yeah. And it's for us, bro. They're just yeah. doing it for attention yeah. and, and to make themselves look yeah. better when deep down they're not doing anything. Yeah. Your message was genuine. It was yeah. completely it was, vulnerable. Yeah. I was crying, bro. My tears my eyes. You can hear it in your yeah. voice. Yeah. But for me, for a, for a foundation like that, about selfless and wanting to give back and really help community and help people yeah. with anything, yeah. it has to be raw because you have to want to do it. Yeah. You can't fake want to help someone. And you're, no. not, you're not helping. No, absolutely not. It would never work. No, I might, I might get a, 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 I might get lucky for a month or two, but then someone gets you right through. And that's what I feel about like TikTok and stuff. Like people do it and, and they get, you know, like and nothing again, nothing against it. Right. You know, it just it's not, it's not sustainable. You know, like my thing is like, bro, like I think you need to almost uh, build something that. I just think that like purpose is so important, man. And anytime you do like the get rich quick, anytime your motivation is messed up, like I'm gonna get rich quick, or I'm gonna get tons of followers, you know, it's like it can, it can be tough. But like, but in this world, like you do need followers, and you do need. You do, and, so, and, and that, that, that's like that's that can the, help. The that's goal. the fight between like you know not being a huge fan of social media or really, but you have to use it as a platform. Yeah. And nowadays, that's yeah. how you get your pla easiest way is, bro. Anyone in the world is reachable. You know that, right? Yeah. Like you can DM Jay Z. I hit up Mike Stud multiple times, I'm waiting on response. Bro, I'm gonna I'm I'm get him on a podcast. Yo, one day. He, he he looks at my message I send him on the on the YNK podcast. Every, really? It's on scene. I've sent him every episode. Wow. I sent him the channel, and it's seen. So someone's seeing it. That's amazing. He's either looking at it, Kilmer, or yeah, someone. Someone. Yeah. But you know what I mean? That's my because he gave me the passion to do this podcast. Right. So that's the the sole motivation where I was like, I can do this. I can relate to him, and I want like he changed my way of. Let's get you on his podcast, bro. Why not? Get you on his podcast, right? Hey, Mike Stud, we're just like you, bro. We're former athletes. You know Both of us, we'll go out to Tennessee. Let's do that, bro. I would love that. We'll go out to Nashville. I'd love that, bro. <laughs> and bro, I'm sure that he'd be down 
to, to have us out there. Because, bro, like, I, I think that he's the type of dude that rewards big dreams. Because you have to be like that, okay? Like, dude, like, like, one thing that I'm gonna start doing is, like, if my friend, um, like, you started this YouTube thing, I'm gonna support you, bro. Okay? I'm gonna like every one of your posts, I'm gonna comment on it, I'm gonna follow you. If you come out with merch, I'm gonna buy it. Yeah. I'm, gonna, because, I'm gonna post you on my story, I'm gonna try yeah. it. Because, bro, all it takes nowadays is one person. The one person to see your thing. Yeah. For it to blow. Yeah. All it takes is one right person. Yeah. Right time, a little bit of love, good yeah. content. Yeah. And it could change your life. Yeah. And that's why I was like, I was talking with my boy KJ last night. You know KJ. Yeah, yeah. And we were just, bro, like. Sud from this town. Yeah. Bro, you gotta support, like, your boys to be the people around you. That, that that have all the answers and the people around you. You can't just reach for the top, reach yeah. for the top. Yeah. Yes, like you said, Instagram. You can, you can reach anyone in the world yeah. by a DM and you can get lucky and they can respond. But yeah. what are they really doing for you if they're not gonna help you? Yeah. Like, I feel like it'd be the people around you that you know you can create something together and then you get to the top with your with your boy that you came up with. Like my stuff, bro. Yeah. My mentality. That's it's what huge. I want. It's huge. Because I know what's out there in the world, bro. It's very surface level. And, and, and you're not gonna get um, a lot of people, bro, that you can trust and count on. And every, every year we get older, you lose more and more people in your circle. Yeah, bro, that's why it's, it's very important to look at your circle and, and realize, like, if you got good friends, like, tell them. Yeah. You guys are good friends. You guys really helped me out. Bro. Like, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm, bro, if I didn't have my friends, bro, I don't even know if I'd be here, bro. Right. I'm very blessed, bro. I'm very blessed. A lot of love. Yeah. A lot of love in the heart, bro. That's what you need, right? Yeah, you need it, bro. You need love, man. Love is mo love is so important, bro. Uh, that's yeah. That's one of the main things with everything that you do. If you love it and you have love, give love. Yeah. I feel like yeah. So r funny, funny. So funny thing. Um, not only am I very spiritual, I'm trying to connect spirituality to like biology because I understand in a Western world. People don't. People will hear me talk about meditation and be like, "Fuck you," you know. So I want to show that there's some actual science and evidence behind, yeah. you know, um, reprogramming your thoughts and thinking positive. Um, so I'm reading this book right now called Power Versus Force. By uh, it's written by an actual medical doctor, um, and he'll put he'll give so he'll provoke an emotion out of someone, mm -hmm. or anywhere from like love to courage to sadness to fear, to shame, to guilt, and he'll have them go work out. And if someone thinks a negative thought, they're weaker, bro, in their workout. Really? But if someone thinks a positive thought, they're stronger. Really? Yeah. And that's the science behind and it? That's like, that's the, there's actual science, yeah. It's, uh, power versus force, it was like a, kines it was like a 20 year um, uh, epidemiology study from kinesiology, exercise science. Um, and, uh, I'm also reading this book called Biology of Belief. Where I'm, I'm, I'm starting to read these doctors, bro, that are getting into how important, because the mind, dude, even, even like people think that like um, genetics is all in the DNA and it's all determined. Dude, there's new evidence coming out now that like um, your genetics mm -hmm. are like, are like consistently changing by your thoughts. Really? Like you can almost control, you're not gonna like go grow an extra foot, you know what I'm saying? But like, um, there's just some some interesting evidence bro about like people think like the hand you're given is like is like your absolute reality and uh not, yeah no dude I'm, I'm such a i'm such a fan of the mind i mean also the kind of had to despise the mind because it's such horrible things to me but i realized once you can use it as a tool and as an ally and as a friend because we all have a voice inside of our head that is is just talking there's there's something inside of us that's talking all day all day and there's something inside of inside of us that that's that's realizing who is talking yeah and, and the, the reason why people can get so scared is because they don't realize that there's a talker and there's a witness they just they just think that the talker is them yeah and that talker sa says weird shit you let the voice in your head loud like be louder than than yourself than your actual self yeah, yeah. um so you realize that like whatever there there is there is something inside of you that um that i believe comes from god and that's your higher self and it's just confident and it's happy and it's peaceful mm -hmm. and then there's this voice that's like i'm not good enough um you this podcast sucked you know yeah uh it just it just says negative stuff all day right um and, and uh I, i've learned to like love it for what it is but like i don't let i don't let that voice steer the ship anymore 
No, I don't know. That's, yeah. And I'm sure that's exactly like why you've changed. Yeah. And you are who you are today. Yeah. Because you change your whole way, your whole mindset, your whole way of thinking, the way you see things. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's the biggest thing. It's it's not it's not what you see. It's the way you see it. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. You could look at anything. Perspective. Yeah. Always always glass half full versus empty. And people think that like, if people look at things from a half a glass half full perspective, that they're blessed and and they're lucky and I'm like no they just chose that. Mm -hmm. That's all they did. That's the only thing that, that differentiates um, these people pe people a full people from empty people is like. The person A chose to think that the world is working in their favor, and this person chose to think that the world isn't. And I understand, bro, that like people are given bad hands, but like, you want to know who's gonna save you from that? You. Yeah. Dude, the government's not coming to save you. Your parents aren't coming to save you. Whatever voice inside your head that's tormenting you, that's your cross to bear. Yeah. You have to deal with that. So the sooner you assume responsibility, I, I love responsibility, bro. I think it's cool because I look at responsibility as opportunity, not worry. Mm -hmm. The sooner um, you realize that um, that you're to blame for anything that's ever happened in your life, yep. the sooner you can change those things instead of giving blame to someone else and put it on. Exactly. Because then you and have to wait for them to change. And that's so big, like in the sports world mm -hmm. yep. that we've dealt with. Oh yeah. Where not every coach is is for your best interest and has your best interest but we're so quick to oh it's the coach's fault that's yep. why it didn't work out there yeah i'm like but, good luck with that yeah good luck with that bro if, if you're yeah. doing what you're supposed to be doing yeah. in practice and in the games you're gonna play you're oh gonna i play. said it yeah i said it i was like it, it was extremely political but i still was able to go to division one yeah it might be a little bit harder but because i had the the mindset of okay even though i was given a bad hand and my eligibility isn't great, and I'm six foot one and a half, and I'm from Long Island, and I'm and the coaches have no reason to play me. I could have just quit there, and I wouldn't have gone to Division One. No. But I was like, I'm gonna create my own destiny. And that's why I'm such a believer in the self, because I, I know what human potential is all about. And bro, like you can do you can do anything, bro. I think if you're I think like I mean we see it all the time. People that are paralyzed come back, dunking basketballs yeah. after that, you know. Human will is a superpower. And one of the problems that I have with all these politicians and, and some of these movements is that it looks at humanity and it demonizes humanity. And like, don't get me wrong, bro. There's a lot of stuff that's wrong with humanity. A lot, bro. And, and we, talked, we talked a lot about it. It's, a lot of it comes from the mind. Yeah. But like, bro, like I'm pro-human. So um, what, I, what I mean by that is like, okay, like, yeah, like we, we have, as, for as much ca capacity that we have, to be these like these wicked beings at the same time like we can also like achieve we, can, we are also like these divine intelligent yeah. beautiful beings that um look what we created you know so i think it's, it's just important to be pro-human um and uh take the stance of human will is, is a superpower it, it's it might, it's not that attractive yeah but um if you put your mind to something you know you can do it and uh, that's that's where I'm at these days. Yeah, no, that's dope. Cause you know, you say you're two and a half months in with the video, you know, videography yeah. and photography and everything. Yeah. And like I said, I feel like you're way past even where a normal person would be. Yeah. And if someone told us in fourth grade when we was in Ms. Cateas' class, like we'd be here today doing this. Yeah. No idea. A yeah, nine, right. Nine year old or when we're freshmen in St. Yeah. Anthony's doing this. No idea. Yeah, this so is cool. Yo, this is a cool moment, bro. Definitely, and that's why like me and you always been for real, bro. Close, it's a real man. cool moment. Yeah, you can kind of tell, bro. Like certain people in your life are there for a reason, you know. Yeah, that's why, bro. I see your dad all the time at the gym. I'm always talking to him about yeah. you and just asking everything going on yeah. when the gym is open. Yeah. But yeah, this is. It's because, bro. Like I, I have no sense of competition with you, bro. No. Just and, love. And that, all, and that, all I have. And that's the craziest, like with friends and. You know, I feel like so many people are in competition with each other. It's like, bro, why, yeah. why, why would we be in competition? Why yeah. would we not try to help, help. each other? And, My, and do you see what Mike said post the other day about collaborating? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Like, why would you not want to help the like, bro? Yeah. If someone else makes it, you know, that you're real cool with, that's creating more opportunities for you. you. Yeah. It's creating networking opportunities for you. Yeah. 
and so many people get so stuck up in, bro, you know how many times I, you see people view your posts and they're not doing anything and yeah. not helping us play. And when you have a business or when you have a, a podcast or anything, like, bro, you see who's really with you? Oh, yeah. You see who's it's really with you? It's a very small amount. I have 13 YouTube subscribers. Really? Yeah, like, dude, like, my, like you saw my stuff, bro. It's good. Oh, I know it is. It's I know good, it is, but, bro. But, uh, and, and I that, have 13 subscribers. Yeah, if, you're, if you know it's good, and, and that's what uh, me and KJ was also talking about last night, bro. It's not about, yes, the following is nice. Yes, yeah. the subscribers are nice. But if you keep consistent, the right person's going to see it. Yeah. And not everyone's... You know, success doesn't happen overnight. Right. It comes with a lot. For yeah. some people, it does, right. and you can get lucky. You can invest in a stock, and it blows up, and you're a millionaire. And people invest in Amazon and Netflix and yeah, everything. Yeah, but then what? Exactly. And yeah. now, now you have all this money, but with no purpose, drive, purpose, passion. anything. Yeah. So now I feel like when you create it, and you start it, and then you build it, and then you make it, it makes it so much more. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, one day we're going to be on the uh, beach in Mykonos, bro. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to be wearing a fedora and a, one of those white shirts. <laughs> yep. I'm going to look at you and be like, yeah, man, remember we talked about it on that podcast, bro. Like, we can literally do anything we put our minds to. And, and, and it's not, and we didn't get all this money and, and, and influence because that's what we were going for. We got it because we chose to chase actual passion and actual purpose. And then money and then um, freedom came as a byproduct of that. Yeah. Bro, and, and, and it stems from... Going through JUCO. Work ethic. Bro, it's that's where it stemmed. Yep. Because now now you use the tool, the tools that you that you learned going through the, the grind, the yeah. morning grind every day at JUCO. Yeah. And now you're applying that to your real life opportunities and businesses and yeah. ideas and creative moments. Yeah. And now you put the same worth it, work ethic that you put in on the field, on the court, yep. in the weight room. Yeah. To something that. else that you and bro like how it, could it not succeed exactly it, yeah. it it's it goes hand in hand i feel where why like we're it's only a matter of time before before something happens yeah yeah, yeah. so i i think you know this is definitely something we're definitely gonna have you back on yeah bro definitely i would love i would back. love to bro yeah i'd couple, love to let, two two three four couple, couple run into the city right yeah a couple months from now you're sure your videography will be booming yeah bro you know everything we'll help be, each other out yeah absolutely yeah, bro. bro but uh Another shout out, I want y'all to see the, the man behind the scenes, Eric. Yeah, Pull buddy. up, Eric. Yeah, yep. buddy. Get in man here, looking sexy. The scenes. Uh. This is my guy, Eric. This is uh, Clearline Beats. But uh, yeah, no, this is the guy that makes it all happen. So big shout out to Eric. Big shout out. Yeah, definitely. But uh, bro, this has been dope. I dope. knew it was gonna be a good yeah. one. You know, as soon as I, yeah. I watched that little brief, uh, watched the podcast that you had and I was yeah. like, no, yeah, I'm getting Jake on. Yeah, yeah, Have yeah. To. Yeah, absolutely, bro. This is, you know, I loved it. And and this is the uh, like, this is like the goal where I wanted to just flow and and, and be like genuine and raw, like mm -hmm. exactly what you were saying with your foundation. Like this is how I want the podcast to be, yeah. where it's raw and everything is natural yep. and been my fucking brother since we've been yep. eight years old, young young bulls. So, so like, and, and then it's crazy because we've had our dis you know over high school when i left st nancy and stuff like that we'd run into each other yeah. around like we said it's yeah. all love but it's not like we've been chilling out linking yeah, yeah, yeah. or talking every day when yeah. we see each other we see yeah, each other it's and, all love and, bro and i feel like those are the best you know friendships and stuff like that the ones that you know that go a long way yeah because we always like we always know what it is you know yeah absolutely bro i feel like that's huge yeah. with uh, relationships and stuff like that and now we're both not doing the same thing but we're doing Very something similar. that goes hand in Very hand so, again we're doing other. it again another creative now we're doing a creative yeah. thing we're doing the athletic thing now we're doing the creative thing yeah and i think it's dope so yeah yeah like i said bro it's been an honor we're definitely gonna get you back on we're gonna oh, love you know show your content definitely on the page cool and uh hopefully you know some people can see what you're doing and yeah. and get on to them with that so cool, man i love you brother thank love you for you having too, me bro. on yes. for real and dope